Ringo TV Reactions, back at you again with another one. Make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe. Let's get to work. Yo, nigga, buy that paper. Ringo TV. Yo, nigga, buy that paper. True man, I'm free, I wake up, a new episode I pop out clean and skippy up a level, though She talk to me like I'm not me, I get it, though Yeah, I'm so eclectic, I'm me to the credits Roll talk down to me, they might have this in medical I'm out the league, I'm OD, they pathetic, though Look how I move, I'm protected Shawty so soon in my presence The world going through it outside, they unruly But I keep it cool, they can't press me I keep it pure with intention They see what I'm on, they don't fix them I might slide through with that top down I keep it tuned with a high power Put it on me, I'm blessed Young nigga blessed Big bag, but the sky, no stress. Keep no evil around me, can't ground me. I built it since when I had less. No hex on God, can't pause, nigga. Look at how far we progress. Whatever we doing, we keeping it fluid. I don't see a thing about that paper. On the jet, I just switch to the coast. One of a kind, I've been playing that role. They pay me to play me, I needed it for. It's real if I said I meant what I spoke. I'm legend, it's written, I shake up the city. Spin black till I'm dizzy, won't ever go broke. I'm chose, I must like the way that top down. I keep in tune with a high power. Put it on me, I'm blessed. Young nigga, blessed. Big bag, manifest the sky, no stress. Keep no evil around me, can't ground me. I built it since when I had this. No hex on God, can't pause, nigga. Look at how far we progress. Whatever we doing, we keeping it fluid. I don't see a thing about that paper. What is the difference though when you hear, and music is like life, you know what I'm saying? And life, you're kind of you're, you're kind of like this, you know what I'm saying? And some people try to put you into a yesterday mode. You know, at one point, yay, we hear, and this is all you. We hear, you know, Jesus is king, we hear this, but that's all you. Then there's sometimes you just want to say, man, not fuck it, but you just want to say, man, this is what I'm feeling right now. Are you in that space where you're comfortable enough to say, this is where I am right now. I'm still a man of God. I'm, Jesus still is king, but this is vultures right now. This is where I am. It is, but I, you know, I, I have my issues with Jesus. There's a lot of stuff I went through that I prayed and I didn't see Jesus show up. So I had to put my, uh, my experience in this world, my experience with my children, my experience with other people, my experience with my account, my experience with my brand, and my experience with the level of music that I was dealing with in my own hands. Mm -hmm. Like a, a lot of times I just feel like in our society, in America, you know, people, Christians, we depend on Jesus so much that we won't put the word in ourselves. And the main thing that really that I, I don't rock with is like, it's just always like, I'm gonna pray for you. And it's just like, you can actually physically do something yourself too, more than just pray. And we're so, in this mentality that that's all that needs to happen but we ain't we ain't praying our way out of prison mm -hmm. we ain't praying our way out of the abortion clinics we ain't praying our way to get our land back that was always ours after gentrification after the harlem uh renaissance and black wall street was burned mm -hmm. to the ground them prayers ain't working we're going we have to apply actual physical building partnerships and it, and it don't start unless we could really be real with each other and say this is what I did this is what I did like I mean look at this I know I'm not gonna third rail your interview but look at the power of what happened when me and Kyrie was on the same page see that's what's scary but what they do is they put us each in a silo and say your grandmother gonna lose her crib and this gonna you know how I many threats we've been dealt, dealt with and I didn't pray my way through them threats either I had to get up 
and do it myself. I had so much to do. I ain't had time to pray. Top of the morning. Appreciate everybody coming through. Ringo TV reactions. We're back again with another one. What we're dealing with is a topic that uh, is ruffling up the feathers of Christians all over social media. They're upset. They're saying that Kanye is claiming to be God, that he's not a Christian, that he's his own God. We're going to cover a lot of different issues. I got I got several live streams I got to cover today. Had to take a little break, but we're back to do some work. I got a lot of content to do today. I feel energized. Sometimes you got to take a break in order to recoup to come back to work. So first thing first that we have to examine is that uh, Kanye West is, for lack of better words now, more Christian than the average Christian. I personally don't identify as no Christian. You already done know I'm an Israelite according to the Bible. I don't follow religion. I don't follow none of that other stuff that they do over there in Christianity because they don't believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob recorded in the Bible. They really don't. And what Kanye did is he exposed the false Jesus that Christians actually follow. And I want to talk about that because you might be one who is following this false messiah and for whatever reason um it's just not good you know so you have to really know where you are in today's day when it comes to this particular issue you understand you have to really know where you are so what we're going to do is we're going to break down this particular video make sense of the whole thing um i was having some tech issues earlier before i went live hope i don't have none of that issues pretty much now but I noticed I'm probably still having, I don't know. Because I've noticed the music comes in and out. I don't know what in the world is going on. But nonetheless, we're just going to pretty much rock with it, right? Um, again, as you come into the stream, be, be sure to click the like button one time. Um, if you notice there's any issues, don't just be blind and not let me know if you're in the live chat. Like, make something, make it known. You understand? Because I'm multitasking. So if you don't hear no audio, if you ain't hearing this... Say something. You know what I mean? If you make false statements, I'm going to have to pack you up. Right? So now, let's get into this thing because we have a lot to cover here. Um, again, um, we're talking about Kanye West um, expose the fake, the false Jesus Christ that Christians follow. And all over social media, Christians are angry. Um, they're displaying a lot of negative energy. They're very judgmental. They're saying he's not a Christian. And, and this is one of the reasons why I had to get out of Christianity is because um, Christians are some of the most judgmental people. Like they, they'll hold everybody else up to a high standard, but they themselves don't even keep the commandments. They sin every single day. They don't follow the laws, statutes, and commandments of the most high. They can't even come together in one accord. The things that Ye represent in this particular video is monumental because what it speaks to is the purpose for which we should be doing. We should be building. Um, a lot of you love to pray your way out of situations. You love to talk about you're praying to God and, and you're doing this and you're doing that. And at the end of the day, it, it doesn't even make any sense. It's like, what do you mean you're praying to God and you're doing this and you're doing that? It, it don't make no sense. It makes, none, it makes no sense at all, you know, because the things that you're praying for, you're supposed to be going out there and building upon it. You're supposed to be able to go out there and make it happen. You get what I'm saying? You should be able to put boots on ground and actually make results come to pass. A lot of us have been accustomed to just being religious and, and Kanye made a point. You know, a lot of times people will say stuff like, well, uh, we'll pray for you. And and the thing is, when they say that, it's like, fam, you could actually do something for me right now. You could actually help me right now. 
but you'll religiousize the whole thing by saying, well, I'll pray for you. But, but you're not even helping to solve the problems. I mean, I even had this done to me uh, several months back when I got demonetized. You know, people was like, oh, we'll be praying for you. Praying for you. How about you support the platform? How about you put something in a collection plate? I mean, if you're getting information and you enjoy the content, why would you tell me in a time of trouble, in a time of need, I'll be praying for you when you got the ability to do something? But see, this is what we do. And this is why we're in bondage right now. And the powers that be is able to control everything. It's because we don't take action. You got brother Newbreed with his initiative on building land so that we could build community. But is anybody, is it, are you getting involved? Are you brothers getting involved? Are you reaching out to Newbreed to say, hey, I want to sign up. What I got to do? Matter of fact, let me put a few dollars towards this. What I need to do? Uh, hey, I would like to lend a helping hand. See, it's like we want to, I guess, wait for when things start happening and then when the results are there, then we want to jump on board. That's not cool, fam. It don't even make no sense to do that type of stuff. But that's where we are in today's day. It's like people want to jump on board when it's like it's popping, when it's popular. And it don't even make no sense to do that. It makes no sense to be like that way. You know, I noticed that the music keep coming in and out. But as long as you can hear my voice, that's the main thing. Because what I was having tech issues with, and I think I know what it is. Um, when you're when you're connecting hard drives to a computer, you shouldn't have the streaming software on before. Um, con I mean, you should have the hard drive plugged in first and then turn on your stream software. I did it backwards. So that could be an issue that will cause some issues with the with the um, the audio because the audio is coming from the hard drive. But nonetheless, as long as you can hear my voice, that's the main thing that's important here. Now, back to the point that I was making about Brother Newbreed, right? You got Brother Newbreed. Um, you got the other brethren that's working with him, the other elder brothers. Um, they're working on building land, property so that we can have a community. So that we don't have to be under the bondage of society where we we have to go to the lenders and we got to do this and we got to do all this other mess and you got to be paying mortgages. I mean, just look at the success of Pastor Dow, right? Pastor Dow have been successfully building his community for years and years and years, teaching us uh, brothers the blueprint. And a lot of us been lazy. We've been procrastinating. We've been playing games. Um, we've been religious. And it's like, we're all trying to establish ourselves by doing our own things. In other words, well, I don't, I don't care about nobody. I, I just worry about myself. But we all claim we follow in God. Those of you who identify as Christians, you say you're Christians, right? But do you really come together? Do you really come together to build anything? You know, think about it. Do you really, do you really come together to build? Do the Christian community come together? to build have the christian community ever come together and say you know what let's end poverty let's do something that can generate wealth i mean with all the millions upon millions upon millions everybody is making why nobody can't seem to come together to build it's like we're all waiting for jesus to come back we're all waiting to go to heaven praying to jesus let me ask you a question how many of you ever prayed to Jesus for a job and the job came and knocked your door? It don't work that way. Jobs don't knock your door. Do you understand? Ladies be out here praying for husbands, praying to Jesus for a husband. Lord Jesus, could you send me a husband? It's not going to happen. It don't work like that. You have to make moves. You have to take actions. You brothers, how many of you brothers prayed to the most high for a good woman? Bro, what are you doing sitting down in your house when you're supposed to be out there hunting? Last time I checked, when the Messiah and the disciples were here, the disciples were fishers, fishermen. They didn't pray for the fish. They had to go out there and do the work. We have become so religious in this society that we all believe in a fake Jesus. What Kanye did is he exposed the false Jesus that the world follow. 
And Christians are upset because, again, they're judgmental and they're not really doing nothing. Who's getting persecuted in today's day? Are Christians getting persecuted or Kanye? Who's getting all the persecution, all of the criticism, all of the backlash, all of the canceling culture? Who's getting all of that? Christians or Ye? Who? Kanye is getting all of the persecutions. You Christians are not receiving no persecutions. You live in your own little world, in a box, in a glass house. You go to your job, you live in your house, and nobody knows you. Nobody don't even know you. You don't even exist in the world. Nobody have no clue who you are. Why? Because you're not doing no work. But Ye is out there in the battlefield, battling demons. Ye got on public platforms and made it very clear that the so-called melanated black man is the true biblical Israelite. When have you Christians done that? Oh, of course not, because you worship Cesar Boger. You worship the white image of the uh, 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 so-called pale skin, blue eye, blonde hair, Jesus Christ. That's who you worship, the false messiah. So when people like Ye stand up and begin to speak, all of a sudden now he get criticized, ostracized, condemned, and bashed all over social media by Christians. And Christians claim that they're the most loving. Christians are the one who's supposed to be showing the world love. But y'all don't show Ye no love. Y'all show him nothing but hate. Y'all try your best to turn the world against this one man. As of though this one man is the Antichrist. It seemed like the only thing Christians know how to do is anytime somebody in the public speak about something, the first thing you try to do is make him not be a Christian because you're following a cult. When did the Messiah, when did the Messiah that you claim is Jesus Christ, which is not really his name because there is no J in the Hebrew alphabet. The letter J is the newest letter in the English alphabet. The letter J came in during the 1611. 1611 King James Bible don't even have a letter J in it. So where did this J come from? Because nobody in the days of the Messiah was calling him Jesus. Go buy yourself a 1611 King James Bible. There is no letter J in the book. Why? Because the letter J is a new letter. So anybody calling him Jesus, number one, you're off. Because that's not even his name. Now, I get it. You want to call him Jesus because maybe you don't know any better. It is what it is. But at the end of the day, I just say Messiah or Savior or whatever the case is. But other than that, his name is not Jesus. Nobody called him Jesus. And that's a fact. You can't debate that because the letter J didn't even exist. So nobody was calling him that. So when the Bible says he was given a name which is above every name, why is everybody calling him Jesus if that's not even his name? And this is how you know you're following a false Messiah, a false Christ. So now let's examine the tape. I'm going to cook a little bit more once we break this thing down. Um, I got to react to another Christian because another Christian on YouTube, he went in talking a lot of stuff about Ye, and I got to pretty much give him some pushback in regards to what he had to say. So let's get to the tapes. Let's find out what's going on here. If the audio stops, you understand the situation, right? Let's go. Difference though, when you hear, and music is like life, you know what I'm saying? And life, you're kind of you're, you're kind of like this, you know what I'm saying? And some people try to put you into a yesterday mode. You know, at one point, yay, we hear, and this is all you. We hear, you know, Jesus is king, we hear this, but that's all you. Then there's sometimes you just want to say, man, not fuck it, but you just want to say, man, this is what I'm feeling right now. Are you in that space where you're comfortable enough to say, this is where I am right now. I'm still a man of God. I'm, Jesus still is king, but this is vultures right now. This is where I am. It is, but I, you know, I, I have my issues with Jesus. There's a lot of stuff I went through that I prayed and I ain't see Jesus show up. Notice what he just said. He said he has issues with Jesus. Once he said that, the Christians started to go crazy because they're like, how dare you say you got issues with Jesus? It's interesting how the Christians are busy trying to defend Jesus. I thought Jesus is the Lord. 
Why are you trying to defend Jesus? If he's the Lord and the master, why are you Christians trying to defend him? When did he say he need your help to defend him? Sounds to me like you're really trying to defend your idol because that's what you created, an idol. The Bible says to not worship any false gods. You worship the Messiah as if though he's God. Do you not know that Christians believe that Jesus Christ is God? Y'all ain't know that? Even though the Bible clearly says that he's not. Christians believe that Jesus Christ is God. So God was praying to himself in the wilderness. <laughs> Father, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? Really? So, the, so, so God was telling himself that you've forsaken myself. <laughs> this is what happens when people are ignorant of the truth. This is why I had to leave the religion of Christianity in 2005. Because I saw all the BS that was going on. I couldn't deal with it. I had many battles on social media with Christians. Till this day, they don't even like me. Matter of fact, by the pure fact that I'm talking about these things, you're going to see them Christians come out of the woodworks all over again. Because they worship the false Messiah. They don't serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob. They don't even believe in keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. You ask a Christian, do you keep the commandments of the Most High? They say the commandments are done away with. You don't have to obey the commandments. What? So hold up. So I could lie and steal now? Because that's what you're basically saying. If you're saying you don't follow the law of the Most High that is done away with, then what you essentially said is that I can commit adultery, that I can rob, that I can steal, that I can bear false witness, that I could do all of these things that the Bible clearly says not to do. But this is where we are with Christianity. They don't teach you to obey the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They teach you religion. If you're going through something, let's just say we'll, we'll pray for you. How many times have you heard somebody say they're going to pray for you and they never prayed? How many times you said, I'll be praying for you, but you never really prayed? You just said it religiously. I'll be praying for you, but you don't even know how to pray. If we were to ask you, how do you pray? What is prayer? Do you even know what prayer mean? Because a lot of people think they know how to pray. They don't know how to pray. To pray to the Most High is to give him back what he already said. To pray to the Most High is to take what is written in the Bible and confess it back to him. That's prayer. True prayer is when you make a prayer in line with the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. In other words, if your prayer is not in line with Scripture, the Most High is not hearing you. Do you not know that? What did it say? Our Father who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So if your prayer isn't in line with the will of the Most High, he ain't hearing you. He ain't even listening to you. Lord, could you, could you send me a car? He ain't giving you no car, especially if you already have a, a working car that's working. He ain't sending. See, that's what the prosperity gospel did. The pulpit pimps, the creplo dollars, the TD of snakes, the Benny sins, all of these particular snakes, those are the ones that taught you that you could go pray to God and he's going to send you money. That's a lie. Lord, could you take my debts away? He's not doing that. You, listen, you have reckless spending habits. Do you understand? You're irresponsible and reckless with your spending. The Most High is not going to take you out of debt only for you to go back in debt. It makes no sense. So a lot of times we be making these prayers that are vain. They're not in line with the will of the Most High. We don't obey the Bible. We don't keep the laws. We don't keep the commandments. We're wicked as heck. But we expect in God to come through and give us this and give us that. It don't work that way. So Ye is basically saying, look, I got a problem with the false Messiah that I've been accustomed to following all this time. In other words, I was always taught that, hey, if you need something, just pray to Jesus. Just pray to Jesus. And 
like a genie in a bottle. Shout out to New Breed. Like a genie in a bottle. All you got to do is just rub that bottle and Jesus is going to come out that bottle and give you whatever you want. That's not how it works. It don't work like that. If that's the case, fam, I don't got to do YouTube videos. If I don't do videos, I don't get paid. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to pray to Jesus. <laughs> you know what, Jesus? Could you make content for me? Just make content appear on YouTube because I don't really feel like working. <laughs> the Bible says, if a man don't work, he shall not eat. That's what it says. If a man don't work, he shall not eat. Faith without works is dead. A lot of you claim you got faith, but you have no works. The writer said, show me thy faith and thy works. Hypocrite. Y'all got all this belief, but y'all ain't putting boots on the ground. That's why nothing could get done. Yeah, it's like, look, when I was in problems, I pray to this Jesus that everybody talk about. I pray to this Messiah that everybody seemed to worship and he ain't come through to me. I got it. I had to get off my ASS and work to get the results. And that's something believers don't do. Believers don't know how to get off their ASS and go out there and make something happen. They don't know how to do that. They don't. So now as you listen to Ye, listen to him because he's speaking very, very boldly. He's more Christian than any of you Christians out there. All you Christians on social media that got all this criticism for Ye. He's on the battlefield. He's battling demons. You religious folks are behind keyboards. You don't got no persecution. You ain't out there saving no souls. Ye is on the front line. He may not be a man that know the Bible because he don't know the Bible. And that's the problem. This is why you so-called Christians are so judgmental. Y'all acting as if though Ye is a biblical scholar. The man is literally walking by faith. The man is literally doing his thing, walking through this life with his basic understanding of who God is. And he have more faith in the most high than you. You have all this talk and negative criticism about this man. And this man got a more better connection to God than you. You ain't getting persecuted. You stay in the comfort of your own home behind a keyboard warrior, typing and typing and trolling. While that man is in the front line, in the public eye, getting persecuted, being called anti-Semitic, being called everything under the book, getting canceled, money taken, business deals off the table. You ain't going through a half of the things he going through and have the audacity to criticize him. Listen, I cannot stand religious hypocrites who talk all this talk and they don't even obey the commandments of the Most High. They don't even obey. It's like y'all want to nitpick every little thing Kanye does and says for clicks and views, but you ain't out here building nothing. All you YouTubers that make all this money on social media, what have you built with all that Christian talk? What have you built? How many families have you supported with all that Christian love you claim you got? You ain't do nothing for nobody. If somebody was to come to you right now and say, I need a place to stay, you'll say, you need to pray about it. <laughs> if somebody came to you right now and said, could you hold me $2,000? I got to pay my rent. I'm about to be evicted. You'll tell them to believe God. <laughs> you ain't going to help them. You know why? Because you're religious and you know how to talk real good behind these microphones. But when it comes to real action, you're not out there putting in the work. And that's something that Ye is trying to make the people understand. Let me rewind it back. I, I, Jesus still is king, but this is vultures right now. This is where I am. It is, but I, you know, I, I have my issues with Jesus. There's a lot of stuff I went through that I prayed and I didn't see Jesus show up. He didn't show up. Because there's a lot of things that he prayed that wasn't in line with the will. Not only that, a lot of the things that we be praying to God for, we got the power in our hands to go out there and handle it and do what we need to do. Christianity reduced us down to being lazy. We don't want to work. We some lazy ASS people, you know. That's what Christianity did. Let's go. So I had to put my uh, 
my experience in this world, my experience with my children, my experience with other people, my experience with my account, my experience with my brand, and my experience with the level of music that I was dealing with in my own hands. Mm. In his own hands. Did you hear that? And by him saying that, the Christians went wild. In other words, you don't got faith in Jesus. No, he's not dumbed down like you. You putting all your trust and hope in a false Messiah, believing that your job is just to pray for stuff rather than getting off your damn ASS and go out there and do the work. That's the problem. It's crazy, man. It be the some, listen, the people that got all this criticism for yay, I can guarantee you their life sucks. They don't obey the commandments. They don't know the most high. They're living in sin. They watch corn all day, beating off, whacking off, doing all sorts of evil. But they got so much to say about this man because they're not paying attention. Because they don't got ears to hear. Listen to what the man said. Listen to what the man said, because a lot of you so-called Christians out there is slow. Experience with my children, my experience. Listen to what he people. said. Rewind it back. I, I have my issues with Jesus. There's a lot of stuff I went through that I prayed and I didn't see Jesus show up. So I had to put my... Uh, In other words, if Jesus is the Savior, if Jesus was hearing all these prayers, if the Jesus that you Christians are following, if he's just, if he's this guy that all you got to do is pray this prayer and he's going to come through in your time of need, how come he didn't come in Ye's help? He's making a valid point. You're religious. And while you sit in there, all these unbelievers are getting rich. They're living a great life. They live in the mansion and palace and live in beautiful lives. While you struggling, being ultra religious, struggling, don't even have enough money to pay your bills, can't even buy your kids any clothes, can't even do nothing for your damn family, can't even put your kids through college because you struggling at some dead end nine to five, working and slaving for somebody else, thinking you serving Jesus. When you're doing exactly what they did to the slaves, made them sit there talking about, I'm praying for this, I'm praying for that. The Bible says faith without works is dead. You sitting there praying all day when you're supposed to be working. If I need a job, my job is not to sit home praying when I got kids and I got a wife. Why would I be at home praying to Jesus? Jesus, please send me a job. Jesus, please send me a Why? Go outside and go look for the job. Why are you home praying? This is the problem. Y'all being religious, and because he said he had to do it himself, you mad because he have the balls to get off his ASS and go make his way successful. Because you lazy. You would rather, yay, sit there and be a Christian and just pray and wait for stuff to happen. If your house is burning, do you pray to Jesus? Jesus, save me. My house is burning. My house is on fire. Jesus, could you, could you, could you put the fire out, Jesus? Could you put the fire out? Jesus, please. Jesus, could you put the fire out? I pray. I pray in the name of Jesus. Could you put the fire out? The house is burning, fool. Get your family out the house. Get your family out the house. You understand? Oh, Jesus, my stove is on fire. My wife was cooking. The pot is on fire. Jesus, help me. Fam, do you got a, a fire extinguisher? No, I don't got no fire extinguisher. So hold up. Wait, wait, wait. What did the Bible say? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, right? Okay, so you don't got no wisdom enough as a homeowner to have proper safety in the house. So you don't got no contingency plans when it comes to fire safety when it comes to uh, 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 severe weather. So you don't you don't prepare for nothing, right? So you don't got no fire extinguisher in any of the rooms where there can be a possible fire, right? Uh, I don't know if you understand this. If you're a homeowner, right, you're supposed to have fire extinguishers, listen, wherever there are locations in your home where there can be a potential for a fire. The reason being, if you have the dry chemical fire extinguisher it can put out pretty much mostly all fires right if you have oil and grease fires and so and so forth you get the appropriate fire extinguisher for that and place in your kitchen do you understand if you have an electrical fire you have to have the appropriate 
uh, 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 fire extinguisher for that particular sort of issue, right? You're supposed to know this. You busy praying to Jesus rather than educating yourself on the basics of home ownership and safety. You got a family. You got kids. You don't want any of your kids to get electrocuted? Okay, put those safety devices into the wall outlets so they don't put a fork in there or a hairpin in there and get electrocuted. Like, come on now. You busy praying to Jesus. For what? You're a grown man. I thought y'all went to college. I thought you ladies are educated. Why is everybody praying to Jesus when all you got to do is just do the basics and make it happen? And that's what Ye is basically saying here. And you know what's so sad? The reason why a lot of Christians got so much smoke for Ye is because you're jealous. You're jealous because the man got so much money and you think because he got all this money, he don't need to pray. As if though having money means that you don't need to pray no more. No, you can have all the money in the world and lose your soul. You should know this. So a man can have all the money and still need help. Even the young rich ruler who came to the Messiah and the Messiah said to give away your wealth, not all, because a lot of y'all Christians don't know how to read. The Messiah never said to give away all your money to the poor and come follow me. It basically told him to give to the poor. He didn't even want to give nothing. Do you understand? Even with all his riches, he still needed the most high. So y'all looking at Ye as if though, oh, he got all this money. He shouldn't even be asking for nothing. Or who is he? It's jealousy. You're jealous. You're jealous because you got to go to that dead end nine to five job that you can't stand. And Ye is a man who's self-made. Even with all the persecution he got, they still can't destroy him. He's doing more work more work right now despite all the crazy things he say he's doing more work than all you christians combined and that's a fact y'all making everything about money 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 you don't got no money that's what you need to get you need to go get some money because being broke and down and out is what's causing a lot of people to be blind and religious. Trust and believe that. All these people out here praying and praying and praying, waiting for Jesus to come through. You're wasting your time. Life is what you make it. There's a point and a time for prayer. There's a time for prayer. But y'all pray for everything that you don't even need to be praying for. If you need a job, you go out there and get the job. Go out there and do some job searching. Go fill out some damn applications and stop being dumb. Sitting home praying to Jesus ain't going to help nobody. You got kids to feed. You got a wife over there looking at you. Them bills are due. The bill collector don't care about your damn Jesus, and he don't care about you praying. He care about where the money at. So while you being religious, thinking that, oh, yay, is disrespecting Jesus. He ain't disrespecting nobody. He's human, and he's, he's telling you his truth on what he experienced. He said that when he was praying to Jesus, no, he, Jesus never came through. How are you going to get mad? How many of you have prayed to the Most High or prayed to Jesus and nothing happened? Nothing. So hold up. You can't go out there and make what you are looking for come to pass? You can't do that? Jesus, make me a millionaire. What are you praying for? Go and put in the work. I told you already. If I don't do content, I don't get paid. If you don't go to your nine to five, you don't get paid. Pure facts. You can't sit home praying all day. Praying all day is not making you no money. But see, when I say that, the Christians are like, but you're disrespecting the Bible. You're, no, you're just dumb. You're, you're religious. Take off for a month. Don't go to your job. Don't go to your job. Sit home and pray. And let me see what happened to them bills. Don't go to work. Monday morning, don't go to work. Stay home for the rest of the month. And let's see how those bills start to look. Let's see if your prayers are going to reach heaven and heaven going to answer. The most high ain't answering you back because you're crazy. You got to work. Let's go. A lot of stuff I went through that I prayed and I ain't see Jesus show up. So I had to put my uh, my experience in it. He had to put his experience. In other words, Jesus didn't show up. In other words, the false Jesus that Christians follow 
right? The genie in the bottle. He had to take his experience and do what, Kanye? Twirl my experience with my children, my experience with other people, my experience with my account, my experience with my brand, and my experience with the level of music that I was dealing with in my own hands. Mm -hmm. Like, a, a lot of times I just feel like in our society, in America, you know, people, Christians, we depend on Jesus so much that we won't put the word in ourselves. And the main thing that... Notice what he just said. We won't put the word in ourself. We won't put the word in ourself. Let me see if I can get this for you. Let's see if I can get this for you. Let me see if I can get this for you. Um, uh, let's see. Book of Proverbs. Let's see if we can get this. Book of Proverbs. It's particular. Okay. Let me see if I can do this. I don't know exactly what scripture it is, but I'm just going to grab all of these real quick and kind of just use them. Wait. I think this is it. It's so many verses. Let me see. Because Ye just said something there and it went right over everybody's head. It went right over everybody's head. And it's sad that Christians are just not educated in the word of the most high. They're not. Let me see. They're not educated in the things of the most high. And this is why they're always getting in trouble. Because. Oh, this is perfect. This is all I need. Just this one. This is all I need. Ye is saying things from the Bible, and you Christians are not even paying attention because you're not applying it. This is why you're upset. You're upset with Ye because you don't like the fact that he's bold and you're not. So I'm going to show you this. First, let's rewind it back. Right? Let's rewind it back first. And then read the scripture. Christians, we depend on Jesus so much that we won't put the word in ourselves. In we depend on Jesus so much that we don't put the word in ourselves. Right? Let's find out what the Bible says. Because these Christians, they don't read. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 23. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Are you seeing that? Are you seeing that? Put a one in the chat if the stream is smooth, everything is going good. I need to make sure everything is going good. Right? Is the stream going good? Because like a lot of people don't know how to communicate. We in a live stream. I depend on people to communicate. If you're not going to communicate, I'm just going to turn off the live stream and just go solo and just speak my mind. So everything is going good. Okay. Um, let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. Somebody said Ringo follows Christ, but ain't Christian. Don't make sense. No, what makes, what makes no sense is that you're just slow. I'm not a Christian. What part of that don't you understand? I don't follow Christianity. Where's the chapter and verse where the Messiah says, hey guys, I came to give you a religion called Christianity. Chapter and verse. 
chapter and verse of the Messiah bringing a religion called Christian Christianity. I'll pay you $100 right now, Cash App. Chapter and verse of the Messiah saying, I come to bring you a religion called Christianity. And moving forward, if you follow me, you must call yourself a Christian in order to be with me. Was John the Baptist a Christian? Was Moses a Christian? Was Jacob a Christian? Was Isaiah a Christian? No. Messiah never came to start a religion. The word Christian is actually a derogatory word used to mock people who follow Christ. But because Christians don't understand the origin of words, they're slow, dumbed down, and docile. They just claim things and start a religion. Do you understand? The religion of Christianity is actually false. This is why everybody always getting upset. Because here, here's the thing. The Bible is for the children of Israel, the melanated people, the biblical Israelites. There's no religion. We're supposed to be following the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. The white man started a religion called Christianity. And the people who are the true biblical Israelites are the lost sheep who are scattered all throughout the earth. This is why Christianity never talk about the true biblical Israelites. This is why when Ye speak about different issues, they try to condemn him as some anti-Semite or some nonsense. Because he speak truth regarding different issues and the powers that be don't like the fact that he have a large platform, a large stage, and money. People like that, they want to try to control. Because if anything, he can wake up the masses. This is why when I speak truth, the algorithm don't push the truth. Why? Because I speak the truth. Things don't make sense to you because you don't read the Bible. Do you understand? I follow the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I don't worship the Messiah as if though he's God. There's only one God. The Most High Yah. He's God. Do you not understand that? I don't know what's wrong with people, bro. A lot of people don't follow the Bible. They really don't even know how to read. It's crazy. But anyway... Let me get back to the point that I was making here. Let me let him speak so that we can continue to read this particular scripture again and break this down because you're going to have trolls that like to distract. Let's go. Christians, we depend on Jesus so much that we won't put the word in ourselves. In we won't put the word in ourselves. That's what Ye is saying. Proverbs 4, 20 to 23. My son, attend to my word. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. My sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. What word? The commandments of the Most High. The commandments. The laws, statutes, and commandments are supposed to be in our heart. We're supposed to be living by the laws of the Most High. You understand? For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. You're wondering why you don't got good health? Because you ain't in this word. The word is not in your heart. That's why you're sick. That's why you're going through so much problems. See, if you are in the word and you understand the, the dietary laws, you wouldn't be eating shrimp. You wouldn't be eating ham sandwiches. You wouldn't be eating pork chops and crab and lobster. You wouldn't be eating none of that mess because you know that's unclean. But in the Christian church, they tell you all you got to do is pray to Jesus over your shrimps and you can chow down. And you wondering why you got bad health. You know? People out here just, they, listen, people don't follow the Bible, fam. They really don't. They're just religious. That's why they're upset with Ye. You know, people, Christians, we depend on Jesus so much that we won't put the word in ourselves. And the main thing that really that I don't rock with is like, it's just always like, I'm gonna pray for you. And it's just like, you can actually physically do something yourself too. And that's true. You could do something yourself, but people don't do it. They really don't. If you need help, nobody won't help you. They'll tell you to pray, pray about it. Fam, if you see me struggling and I come online and I say, yo, fam, X, Y, and Z is happening. And rather than the people who watch the platform, who learn so much from this platform, 
you would tell me, oh, I hear your problem, Ringo, but uh, we we'll be praying for you. And you're wondering why we got all these issues. When that man was going through everything he was going through, he prayed and the Messiah that you guys follow, the false Messiah, never answered no prayers. Never answered no prayers. So he had to go and make it happen. You know why? Because that's what we're supposed to do. The false Messiah want us to be stagnant and procrastinate. The false Messiah want us to all be lazy and sit around waiting to see if it's in his will. What are you talking about? If you knew his word, you would know what his will is so that when you pray, it's in line with his will. The Most High is going to only grant answers to prayers that are in line with his will. If your prayer is not in line with the word of the Most High, you ain't getting nothing. People don't know how to pray because they're dumbed down and docile. They don't know nothing. Listen, people, if you pray, if your prayer is not according to the will of God, he's not hearing you. You can't go and just pray for whatever you want. And it's not in line with the will. What did he say? Look at the lilies of the field, the birds of the air. They neither sow nor do this, but your heavenly father feeds them for he know that they have need. O ye of little faith. He already know you got needs, but it's not his responsibility to pay your rent. You got to go out there and work. Do you understand? We living in a whole different time. You got to go to work. You got to start the business. He'll give you wisdom, but you got to go make it happen now. Jesus, could you please? I, I have underarm odor. I, I, I smell. I, I don't like how I smell. Jesus, could you help me? <laughs> Why don't you just go take a shower? Go buy some soap. It ain't that hard to do. Go get some soap. If you got underarm problems, you at work, it was a crazy day, it's hot. You're like, Dad, what the hell? <laughs> it's crazy, man. You know how to fix that problem. You don't need to pray about this. That's why I always tell people, listen, fam, if you work on the nine to five grind, right? Every last one of you that work on the nine to five grind, you supposed to all have a care package. What is a care package? A care package consists of a, a, a large zip bag. You know, like the large, large zip bag that you zip, the clear ones. In that large zip bag, you have the items needed. Um, a, 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 a deodorant, if that's what you use, right? Some people don't choose to use deodorants. You have some organic kinds and whatever the case is, maybe you don't use those things. It is what it is, but let me just explain myself. In that zip bag, you have your deodorant, uh, some baby wipes in another zip lock, right? Another zip bag inside of the zip bag, some baby wipes, um, a wash rag, a little uh, container of body wash, like soap. You have that there. Uh, a bar of soap, right? That's in the, in, the, in the package. A little thing of lotion, right? Cocoa butter, whatever the case is. Um... Whatever things you can have in there. Um, a small cologne, a small perfume, depending, male, female, whatever the situation. Um, you can have, uh, you know, it's it's just the items that you need to make sure that you can freshen up and do what you need to do. Um, you should always have, uh, if you work at a nine to five, an extra pair of underwear, um, an extra pair of an uh, undershirt. You know what I'm saying? Like a T-shirt, whatever the case is, a fresh pair. That way, if you had to shower, if your job has a shower, the last location where I worked, we had a shower. So after work, because we did dirty work, jump in the shower. Boom, boom, boom. You straight. 
or you go into the bathroom real quick, boom, 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 whoopity whoop, head on out, you good. Because you don't want to be around people smelling. Do you need to pray to Jesus for that? Or just handle it yourself? You understand? So what Ye is basically saying is, look, when I was going through it, I prayed to the, to the Jesus the Christians follow. But that Jesus didn't come through for me. That's the problem I got. He didn't, he don't have a problem with the Messiah, Messiah. He have a problem with the false Messiah that you Christians been introduced to him. That's who he have a problem with. He have a problem. You know what's so crazy about this, fam? Christians believe that Ye is coming against a Jesus. I never seen Jesus needing anybody's help. Why is it that all these Christians, every time somebody talk about Jesus, y'all all come through with the pitchforks and guns and fire ready to kill people? Is your Jesus not powerful enough to handle his own business? I mean, you're praying to somebody that you got to defend. Make that make sense. I wouldn't want to be praying to somebody that I got to keep defending. You know, you got way more problems in the world to be worrying about what Ye is saying. Real talk. Let's get back to the tapes. You know, people, Christians, we depend on Jesus so much that we won't put the word in ourselves. And the main thing that really that I don't rock with is like, it's just always like, I'm gonna pray for you. And it's just like, you can actually physically do something. That's, yo, that's so true what he's saying, man. I've had this done for me, fam. I had times, fam, where I was in need, was going through something and needed help, like right on the spot. And all the people I try to reach out to, they were just religious about it. Oh, I I'll be praying for you. And I'm like, like, bro, you got it in the power of your hands to do it. Matter of fact, there's scripture for that. There's scripture for that. Let me see if I could get it. There's scripture for that. Let's get it. Notice how I'm speaking, and as soon as I say something, I know where to go in the Bible. You know why? Because I actually read it. I'm not a hypocrite like you Christians who sit there arguing and fighting all day but you ain't even following God. Proverbs chapter three, verse 27. Withhold not good from them to whom it is due when it is in the power of thine hand to do it. See, this is the problem. Withhold not good from them to whom it is due when it is in the power of thine hand to do it. Imagine people coming to you for help and rather than you help them because you have it in the power of your hands, you would rather say, I'll be praying for you. <laughs> that's, what, that's what Christians do. They won't help. They'll just say, I'll be praying for you. See, I don't know about you, you fam out there, fam. On this platform, we keep it a buck. We keep it a thousand. I don't sugarcoat. I'm transparent. There have been times, fam, back in the day, couldn't get the rent. It was either the rent or food. Maybe I'm the only one in the world that had these experiences. Maybe you are just perfect. Maybe you never had no issues. There have been times back in the days, fam, it was either the rent or food. Rent or food. You had to make your choice. Which one are you going to pay? Which one are you going to do? Because if you don't pay the rent, now you're in trouble. <laughs> and if you pay the rent, now you're going to be struggling. You ain't going to be eating. I had those days. So I know what struggling is like. So when I reached out to people that I felt would have my back, 
You know what they told me? We'll be praying for you. We'll be praying for you. <laughs> I'm like, bro, you have it in the power of your hands to do it and you won't even do it. But you claim you follow Jesus. I don't rock with it. It's like, it's just always like, I'm going to pray for you. And it's just like, you can actually physically do something yourself too, more than just pray. And we're so in this mentality that that's all that needs to happen, but we ain't, we ain't praying our way out of prison. We ain't praying our way out of prison. When people get locked up and go to prison, they ain't praying their way out of prison. Mm -hmm. We ain't praying our way out of the abortion clinics. Right. What about that? Where's the prayers for that? We ain't praying our way to get our land back that was always ours. We ain't praying to get our land back. What about our land? We ain't praying to get at, we ain't praying to get the land back. We ain't even coming together to build anything. We don't even want to build community. We don't even want to come together. Show me Christians that are on social media, Christian influencers that got YouTube platforms. How many of y'all had come together to build community? How many of y'all had come together to meet the needs of people? Hello? None. Because all you think about is yourself. Because you're religious. You ain't doing nothing for nobody. You don't care about nobody but yourself. That's it. After gentrification, after the Harlem uh, Renaissance and Black Wall Street was burned mm -hmm. to the ground. Notice what he's saying. He's speaking real talk, real ish. After Black Wall Street was burned down, we ain't even build back up Black Wall Street. You got all these people out here we can't even build because we don't want to come together. You got people that don't even want to work with Ye because they don't want to get canceled. Being around him is like having a, 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 dirty, a dirty dog with you. You got to get rid of it. You understand? So now the Christians are now condemning Ye by saying, oh, he's claiming he's God. We're going to talk about that in another stream. Them prayers ain't working. We're going to we have to apply actual physical building partnerships. Are you listening? The man is speaking real talk. He said, all those prayers y'all praying, them prayers ain't working. Y'all still following uh, Martin Luther King about I have a dream that we're going to all come white man and black man and join hands. Fam, that's a dream. In order for you Negroes to get any sort of results in this day, you got to come together and build together, not by yourself, together. That's the only way. You know, this is why the black community can't thrive because we can't join and society is doing everything they can to keep black people divided. Why do you think I released that song, Missing You? You know how I released that? You wanna know why I released that particular song? Put a one in the chat if you want me to tell you why. I'm gonna show you why. It's gonna, it's gonna blow your mind. It's gonna blow your mind why I released that energy into the world. There's a reason why. On social media right now, black men and black women are divided. We're divided. We're not building family. There is no love. There is no unity. You know why? Because in the music industry, there is no more love music. There is no more music that influence love. There is no more music that influence family there's no more love making music there's no more coming together music there's no more images of a black man and a black woman hugging one another kissing one another we don't see it some of you when you looked at that music video especially at that beginning part and you saw those couples together it made you feel some type of way for some of you it warmed your heart to see that because you don't see those images you know why? They took those images from us. And now what do we see? We see Sexy Red doing a bunch of ratchet garbage. We see Nicki Minaj doing a bunch of ratchet garbage. We don't see no, we, there's no music no more. 
Back in the day in the 90s, it was in the 80s and 90s, nothing but love music, nothing but relationship music. Everybody wanted to be in a relationship. Everybody wanted love. But now, all we got is toxicity. And that's why every woman is saying, I'm enjoying being single. I don't need no man. Why? Because there's no music no more. The women aren't singing love music. The men aren't seeing love music. All we got is trap music and drill music. A bunch of poison. And that's all we hear. No wonder we're divided. So if the family is divided, if the black man and black woman is divided, then we're not going to have no black business. This is why we're spending all our money with the other races. We'll go to the Asian man and spend billions. You ladies spend billions on hair. All that money could have been put into Black Wall Street again to rebuild. You brothers will spend millions and billions on everybody else but yourselves. If a black man start a business, we don't support it. If a black woman start a business, black people will not support it. We will support everybody else but our own. And that's just the facts. So what Ye is saying is real talk. We got to come together and mobilize and build rather than sitting here talking all this stuff about we praying. After gentrification, after the Harlem uh, Renaissance and Black Wall Street was burned mm -hmm. to the ground, them prayers ain't working. We're going to we have to apply, apply actual physical, physical building, building partnerships. partnerships. And, it, and it don't start unless we could really be real with each other and say, this is what I did, this is what I did. We have to be real with each other. We gotta be real with each other. That's the only way we're gonna be able to start that. It sounds nice when he say it, but we gotta first of all be real with ourselves. We gotta look at ourselves as men, especially black men, because a lot of us black men, we hate one another badly. Because once we start getting a little money, we start rising a little bit, all of a sudden, the jealousy kick in, the hatred kick in. You can have somebody that got more money than you, and you don't got no money, and they jealous of you. Being jealous is not always about somebody wanting what you have or because they got money and you mad because you don't got no money. No, you can have somebody that got money, and they're jealous of you when you're broke because they're jealous of the fact that you got peace. They're jealous of the fact that you might be talented, and it's just something they wish they had. So jealousy is, it could be negative and it could be positive. You can be jealous and it could be a good thing. Meaning, you could be married to a woman and you found out there was some other guy messing with your woman. You're jealous. Or it could be a guy that's flirting around your woman or doing something that's inappropriate and you get jealous. That's a, that's a positive jealous because you're supposed to be. Because your woman belong to you. That's your wife. No other man supposed to be doing all of that. You get what I'm saying? Because a lot of times when we think of the word jealous or jealousy, we think that, oh, it's always negative. Even the Bible says that the Lord, your God, is a jealous God. Why? Because we worship idols. So when we worship false gods, he's jealous because he want our worship. And what a lot of Christians are doing is they're going out there worshiping a false messiah that teaches people to be lazy. There's so much drama going on in the world right now that we should be preparing for and getting ready, not saying to be like fear mongering or, or to live in fear and, and be worried because to worry is a sin. If you're worrying all day about your children dying, that's a sin because why? You're applying negative energy, which is fear. And fear is the faith of the devil. Fear is inverted faith. Do you understand? So you don't want to sit around worrying or being fearful of coming times. But you should be prepared to the point where, okay, I know this is what's going on with the economy. That's what's going on in the workplace. But at least I know I'm prepared that if anything was to pop off, I'm good. You get what I mean? You could be working at a nine to five and... You might have heard some, some rumors that they're about to do some cuts. And you know you might be on that list. So you're prepared mentally of the shock of possibly getting cut. And you already done have a contingency plan in place in case anything pop off. Maybe nothing might not happen. 
but at least you're prepared. You're not fearful. You're not worried, but you're not dumb. You get what I'm saying? So it's all about being in, being prepared. You know? So what he's saying we got to do is we got to build together. Let's go. Renaissance and Black Wall Street was burned mm -hmm. to the ground. Them prayers ain't working. We, gonna, we have to apply actual physical building partnerships. Hands and, it, and it don't start unless we could really be real with each other and say, this is what I did, this is what I did. Like, I mean, look at this. I know I'm not going to third rail y'all interview, but look at the power of what happened when me and Kyrie was on the same page. See, that's what's scary. Do you see what he just said? Now, y'all know all the controversy surrounding Ye and Kyrie. Y'all understand the controversy with that. We don't got to go deeper into that. But notice that when they were on the same page, the powers that be were scared. And that was only because of two men. Because two men were on the same page, it shook the earth. But yet all you Christians on social media is talking about yay. Y'all don't got that kind of attention. When, when have you Christian content creators gotten the attention of the government? The news media. <laughs> I mean, you doing content and the news media is talking about you. You ain't making no impact. Listen, anytime, this is how you know when you're really repping the most high. When you really out here doing this work, if you ain't getting that persecution, and remember, Ye got money and still he's hated. So having money don't mean, you, you know, you good. You get what I'm saying? If you're not getting persecuted for speaking truth, then you ain't speaking the truth. These Christian influences don't got the kind of problems that Ye got. You know? And that's the problem. And see, <clears throat> you folks that are in the comments clearly show and prove why Kanye is right. You got this Don Kilumati in the chat says, Kanye ain't spitting no scriptures. <laughs> this is what I mean by religious. This is what I mean. Everything to you is religion. The man is speaking truth. He's speaking scripture. He's literally, listen. Yo, I'm telling you, you guys are slow. You're slow. Listen to what he said, man. Renaissance and Black Wall Street was listen burned to, to the said. ground. We ain't praying our way out of prison. Mm -hmm. We ain't praying our way out of the abortion clinics. We ain't praying our way to get our land back that was always ours. All of this is scripture. All of what he's saying is in the scriptures. You can find scriptures that go right with what that man is saying. Let's go. After gentrification, after the Harlem uh, Renaissance and Black Wall Street was burned mm -hmm. to the ground, them prayers ain't working. We're going we to have to apply actual physical building. That, the Bible says to do this. The Bible says for us to build houses and vineyards and plant gardens. The Bible says this partnerships Hands and, it, and it don't start unless we could really be real with each other and say this is what i did this is what i did like i mean look at this let me pack this I know dumb ass up i'm not gonna third rail your interview but look clowns. at the power of what happened when me and Kyrie up. was on the same page see that's what's scary you know what's so crazy and sick fam yeah is over here speaking real talk and you got these clowns in my live chat that ain't doing nothing for their community they ain't building nothing. They ain't helping nobody. They just religious with a Bible in their hand. Religious. They not doing nothing. They not doing no work. But they over here gotten, they got criticism for him because he's not quoting a Bible verse. The white man is out here building skyscrapers. The white man is out here building buildings infrastructure while ninjas is worrying about if somebody's quoting a scripture <laughs> and you wondering why your women don't respect you you wondering why the black woman don't respect us brothers you know why because we're fucking cowards 
The black woman is the first to rebuke us by saying, hey, black man, where's our land? Hey, black man, what have you guys built? We don't like hearing that from the black woman, but she got a point. When the fuck we going to stand up as men and start to build and start to lead? But we expecting a woman to submit and listen to your bullshit when you ain't out here doing a damn thing, but worrying about who quoting a damn scripture when you don't got no money in your pocket. You haven't done anything for your people. You're just religious. But yet Ye is up here spitting real truth. And we wondering why our women don't respect us. You can't even blame the black woman for not respecting the black man. Because we ain't shit. All we do is quote scriptures. But we ain't out building nothing. We ain't doing nothing. We out here waiting for Jesus. We got women and children. We waiting for Jesus. When we got women and children that need a place to stay. They need a house. What you ninjas are doing to get that house? Are you working to get that money to get that house? What are you doing? You praying to Jesus, right? Ye is over here speaking some of the realest ish on his platform. You ninjas don't got that platform that he on. I don't got no time to be criticizing this man. I know Ye is not a Bible scholar. So I'm not here to be judgmental like you hypocrites. I'm not here to be judgmental by saying he ain't quoting no scriptures. Fam, the bruh is speaking real talk. You waiting for him to quote a scripture? Remember the days when you didn't know no Bible? Remember the days, hypocrite, when you didn't even know a scripture? Remember when you were an idiot and you ain't know nothing and brothers had to rebuke you and school you? You remember that? It's so funny how we forget. It's so interesting how we forget where we came from. It's crazy, man. So if Ye didn't quote a scripture, nobody's listening. And you're wondering why we as black people can't build nothing. It's not because of our women. It's because of our men. Our men are weak. Black men are weak, you know. Black men? Weak. Weak. Some of the weakest men on earth is black men. Weak. Because when you speak this real talk, the first thing they do is they want to blame the woman. Oh, the woman. You know, it's the woman. If the black woman would humble herself, ninja. You talking about if the black woman would humble herself, are you keeping the commandments of the most high? You too busy beating your meat to some corn. And you worried about the black woman humbling herself when you can't even control your hand? Your hand has become your woman. And you talking about the black woman? I told you already, fam, as soon as black men start to build, get themselves right with the most high, the black woman is going to have no choice but to come along. The black woman is just going to do what she got to do to survive. All the stuff the black woman is doing that you guys know is negative, and we're not excusing her negativity, but she's trying to survive because the man ain't leading nothing. Yeah, but Ringo, what about feminism and what about hypergamy and what, what about it? Are you guys following the most high? Are you guys building community? Are you guys buying land? Are you guys even getting yourself in shape? What are you guys doing? The women are going to try to survive and do whatever they could do to survive. They're doing what they're supposed to do. Survive. That's what they're going to do. Am I saying it's positive? No, it's not. But how could they depend on you when you ain't doing shit? How could a woman leave her job, leave herself up, up her employment, Humble herself to be a wife and married and depend on your ass when you ain't doing nothing. <laughs> so you so you want her to leave this career that's making her all this money. She got these benefits. She got her house. She got her car. You want her to leave all that shit to come follow you when you ain't doing nothing. But reading scriptures and quoting Bible verses, but you ain't established nothing. 
This is why I don't understand why women get upset with me when I'm fair and balanced. When I'm ready, I go in on the women. And when I'm ready, I go in on these brothers. Because there's no one-sided thing with me. I rebuke the men and I rebuke the women. Right is right and wrong is wrong. Anybody condemning Ye for the things he said is not really a real man. Because he's speaking real talk. Let's rewind it back. We ain't, we ain't praying our way out of prison. Mm -hmm. We ain't praying our way out of the abortion clinics. We ain't praying our way to get our land back that was always ours after gentrification, after the Harlem uh, Renaissance and Black Wall Street was burned mm -hmm. to the ground. Them prayers ain't working. We, gonna, we have to apply actual physical building partnerships. Listen, everything Ye is saying right there is right in the Bible. But we got these clowns on social media that want Ye to quote a scripture in order for it to be accepted. You brothers really hate your people, man. And it be the religious ones that are the real enemy to this truth. This is why when people come at me, oh, you're doing this and you're doing that, I just laugh, man. Because you got hypocrites in Christianity and you got brothers that claim that they're Israelites that are hypocrites. Ain't none of these guys working together. They all think they're the truth. They all think they got this, this special knowledge that only they got. You know? It's really sad, man. He said we got to come together and mobilize and build together. That's written in the Bible. It's written up in the Bible. And it, and it don't start unless we could really be real with each other and say, this is what I did, this is what I did. Like, I mean, look at this. I know I'm not going to third rail your interview, but look at the power of what happened when me and Kyrie was on the same page. See, that's what's scary. Yep. But what they do is they put us each in a silo and say, your grandmother going to lose her crib and this kind of, you know how I many threats we've been dealt, dealt with? And I didn't pray my way through them threats either. I had to get up and do it myself. I had so much to do, I ain't had time to pray. Now, what is the yeah. difference though when yeah. you hear, and music is like life, you know what I'm saying? And life, you're kind of you're, you're like this, you know what I'm saying? And some people try to put you into a yesterday mode. You know, at one point, yay, we hear, and this is all you, we hear, you know, Jesus is king, we hear this, but that's all you. Then there's sometimes you just want to say, man, not fuck it, but you just want to say, man, this is what I'm feeling right now. Are you in that space where you're comfortable enough to say, this is where I am right now. I'm still a man of God. I'm, Jesus still is king, but this is vultures right now. This is where I am. It is, but I, you know, I, I have my issues with Jesus. There's a lot of stuff I went through that I prayed and I didn't see Jesus show up. So I had to put my, uh, my experience in this world, my experience with my children, my experience with other people, my experience with my account, my experience with my brand, and my experience with the level of music that I was dealing with in my own hands. He had to put these things into his own hands, y'all. Into his own hands. He had to go out there and make things happen. And that's one of the biggest problems with us as a people is that we don't know how to make things happen. We're lazy and we just like to be religious and we're not really... Uh, um, doing anything for the community. For example, like I'll be doing this stream and you'll have nothing but trolls that'll come by. Sign up, subscribe in order to join the live chat just to post BS, right? None of these people are working towards anything. They're not establishing nothing. They don't have nothing. There's nothing that we can look at in their life and say, okay, this person did this or this person is doing this to empower his people. Nothing. All we like to do is find fault and condemn everybody, and we're at the bottom still. We're not rising. We're not going nowhere. And it's because we refuse to humble ourselves and get right with the Most High. You know? We don't want to humble ourselves. Jeremiah 29, 4 to 8, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Build ye houses and dwell in them and plant gardens and eat the fruit thereof. Take ye wives and beget sons and daughters and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands that ye may bear sons and daughters, that ye may increase 
there and not diminish. See, our people are diminishing right now. Our people are diminishing right now because we, we're we not following the most high. We're not following the scriptures. We're not building. We take everything for a joke. And every time somebody comes out there with truth, instead what we do is we condemn them, right? Because we want to see some scripture because we're, we're slow, you know? It says, and seek the peace of the city, whether I have caused you to be carried away captives and pray unto the Lord for it. No, notice what he said to pray unto the Lord for it. Are you seeing the instructions? See, a lot of folks are not paying attention in class. We think prayer is something that we could just do on our own that have nothing to do with the will of the, the most high. Your prayer have to align with thus saith the most high. Meaning if we're not doing what was instructed by the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The prayers will never work, and he's not listening. He just told you, and seek the peace of the city, whether I have caused you to be carried away captives, and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. Do you see that? For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams which you cause to be dream. In other words, all of these false prophets, these pastors, the Creflo Dollars, the TD Snakes, these, these Christian influencers on social media, the Most High is literally telling us, thus saith the Lord of hosts, let not your prophets and your diviners those are, he's talking about false prophets and all these other people, these, these diviners and dreamers of dreams. Don't let them deceive you. Why? Because I didn't send them. I didn't send none of these people. But you're going to have a lot of people that's calling themselves prophets. You know, you got your, your prophet, Lovey. He's a false prophet. But Christians follow this guy. He's a false prophet. But because he called himself prophet Lovey, you think he's from God. The man is a demon. He's not from the Most High. But again... The Most High clearly gave you instructions. He says, let not your prophets and diviners that are in the midst of you deceive you. But what are people doing? They're getting deceived every day. The Messiah says many false prophets will arise and deceive many. And it's happening. The entire religion of Christianity is one big deception, y'all. One big deception. And it's sad that no matter how much truth I share, they'll still be blind. They'll still find a reason to attack me. Because in their mind, they got to defend their God. Where in the Bible, <laughs> where in the Bible did the Most High, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, needed you to defend him? That's how you know you're not defending God. You're trying to protect your damn idol, which is religion. You know? Um, let me see. Uh, somebody said, thank you, Ringo, for sending me, um, I guess, to Pastor Dow. Pastor Dow, listen, if you follow if you follow this platform, right, and all the brothers in the truth, if you're listening, take heed to this. Because as men of truth, we're supposed to be on one accord. Because if you're not going to be on accord with what I'm saying, I'm not going to do this. So if you're a brother in this truth and you're listening to me right now, Pay attention to these instructions. We're supposed to be making sure that the people know who we are. So if I say, hey, brethren, if you're watching my platform, go support Pastor Dow. Pastor Dow is supposed to return that favor back over here. If I say go over there and follow Mark the Messenger platform because he speak truth, Mark the Messenger is supposed, hey, supposed to return the favor, fam. If I say go over there and support um, um, New Breed Global Truth, New breed got to return back that favor, fam. That's how we supposed to move as men in this truth. It shouldn't be I'm telling people, hey, go to there and support them. And go there and support them. And you brothers ain't doing that for me. Come on now. If that's the case, I won't shout nobody out. And see, that's exactly why we can't grow. Because we don't know how to unite as men. This is real, man.
And also make sure you support Floridine, Rallo Lex, let's go. Salute to Rallo. Another brother in the truth. That's how we supposed to be. That way when the viewers come over here, they like, okay, I'm listening to what Ringo's saying. Let me see what New Breed's saying. Let me see what Mark the Messenger's saying. Let me see what Pastor Dow's saying. Wow, these guys are really speaking truth. Yeah, truth. But when you go to these Christian influencers, they're not going to give you the truth. They're going to give you religion. Big difference. Let's get back to the tapes. Like a, a lot of times I just feel like in our society, in America, you know, people, Christians, we depend on Jesus so much that we won't put the word in ourselves. And the main thing that really that I, I don't rock with is like, it's just always like, I'm going to pray for you. And it's just like, you can actually physically do something. You can physically do something. But we ain't doing nothing. Y'all remember when, when Ye, I believe it was Ye, right? Yeah, it was Ye. He said slavery was a choice and everybody got upset. Y'all remember that? Put a one in the chat if you remember when Ye said that slavery was a choice and everybody got upset. Because when he said that, people thought he was crazy. What do you mean slavery was a choice? Yes, it was. It was a choice. You, you had a choice. You had a choice to be free or you had a choice to be a slave. <laughs> this is how you know that black men are weak. Because here's the thing, fam. The reason why Ye was correct in that slavery was a choice is because we had a way out of it. First of all, when you study the Bible... The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob put us in slavery because we didn't keep the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. And he gave us a way out of slavery. Out of slavery would be to keep his laws, to repent, and do what we need to do. Let's bring it out. Let's bring it out. Watch this. Because everybody's praying for all the wrong things, right? 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 Let me bring this out. Because I actually bring out the scriptures when I teach. I'm not like these Christians that twist scripture. Christians don't know how to rightly divide scripture. I'm telling you right now. And if you're a Christian and you're offended, most likely applies to you. They don't know how to read the Bible to break down scripture. If you want to learn scripture, you got to be following the brothers in the truth. Find out what the Bible says. You know, the Bible nobody reads. <laughs> Second Chronicles um, 7.14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. And you're wondering why your prayers are not being heard. He said, if my people, who are his people? Is it everybody? Is the people of God everyone on the earth? Is the people of God those people that are in the so-called land? Are those his people? Because he said it right here. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, who's his people? Because everybody is not his people. Oh, no. We're the people. The people that he put in slavery. Because we didn't keep his commandments. And that's what he's telling us. Because here's the thing. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. You ready for this? You ready for this? Are you ready? For, put a one if y'all want this truth. Put a one if y'all want this truth. Put a one if you want this truth. I'm going to give y'all this truth.
going to get this right out the Bible. Because people think this is a game. We're going to get this right from the Bible. We're going to put this truth out there. Because I'm tired of these lies. Tired of everybody playing church. And acting like, like this is some sort of game. Right? Now watch this. The people of the Most High is us. You and me. We're the people of the Most High, the biblical Israelites, the people that have been scattered all over the earth. You know? That's right. We're the chosen people of the Most High. We're the ones they're trying to hide. We're the ones that they don't want no one to see because they want to keep us dumbed down, docile, and ignorant of this truth. Let's bring this thing out. Now, he said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear, then will I hear from heaven. That's when he's going to hear and will forgive their sins. He's not going to hear if we didn't turn from our wicked ways. And will heal their, heal their land. That's when he's going to heal our land. Now, question. Watch this. The people today that are claiming to be the people of the Most High, are they going around the earth preaching the gospel? The Messiah said this gospel shall be preached all throughout the earth. Are the people who claim they're the people of the book going around the earth preaching the gospel? No, they're not. But who actually is? See, y'all all getting played. That's why they didn't like Ye. Ye ruffled up the feathers. Now watch this. Watch what the book of Revelation says. Let's bring it out. From the Bible. Let's bring this out. Let me see if I can get this real quick. Okay. Right from the book. Check this out. Revelations chapter 2, 9. I know thy works and tribulations. Now, this is the most high literally saying, look, I know thy works and thy tribulations and poverty. Let's stop right there. Poverty. The most high knows our tribulations and our works and all that stuff and poverty. Who's in poverty? Our people. Our people are in poverty. But thou art rich, rich in spirit. And I know the blasphemy. Now notice what the notice what the Bible says here. I know the blasphemy of them that say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. I mean, do I need to say more? I'm just reading the Bible. I'm reading what the book says. The book says, I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. So the most high is saying someone else is out there saying that they are the people and are not. Are you not seeing that? Revelations 3, 9 says, Behold, I will make the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews are, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet 
and to know that I have loved thee. So now if the Most High is saying he have loved thee, which is us, then he don't love them. Are you not seeing that? Right from the Bible now. I didn't make nothing up. So my thing is why the Christian church ain't teaching this. Why, why the Christian church ain't opening the Bible to teach this truth? Why? So when Ye is trying to put this truth out there by saying we need to come together and build, it's real. They don't want us to come together because they know that we're the biblical Israelites and they know the minute we come together, the minute we come together, that's when the Most High is going to do what is needed to um, heal our land. That's why it says in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people, so he's talking to the chosen people of the Most High, his people, right? If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. This is why we were put in slavery. Because of our wicked ways. The book of Deuteronomy pretty much covers this. You know? Let me bring it out. Because some of you out there might be um, new to the channel. You may not understand certain things. So maybe you don't know. You know what I mean? Let me see if I can get this for you. Let me see if I can get this for you. Um, let me see. Book of Deuteronomy. Come on. Why this button not working? Okay. All right. Okay, Deuteronomy 28, right? Let's see if we could get this. I mean, I would really like to get the whole thing, but due to time, I'll see if I could get some of it. Let me see. I'll get this. Get this. Because there's a lot to this. Okay. Let's get this. Trying to get the key pieces so that the viewer can, I guess, walk away with some understanding because it's a lot to explain. There's so many different points to be made about this. It's like what they did to us is so bad. It's just it's crazy. Let's go to from verse 45. Okay. Let me get this. So we got. And again, in the Christian church, they're not going to give you this info. They're not going to do this because. They don't want you to wake up. They don't want you to wake up to this truth. All right. 
Okay. So, let me get these scriptures on the screen. All right. All right. So, I'm going to do a little reading. Those of you who might, this might be new info to your ears. Um, it'll help you to grow. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 45 to 55. And shout out to, let me see. Some people support it. Um, let me see. Hold on a second. Let me read these super chats. Shout out to Floridine Rallo. Let's go. For the support, it says, He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack, but he that hideth his eyes shall have many curses. Man, that's crazy. Proverbs 28, 27. Support and spread the truth. That's a powerful scripture. Make sure everybody that's viewing this live stream go over there and support and subscribe to Floridine Rallo Let's Go. He's a brother in the truth. He speaks truth. Again, the people you're supposed to be subscribed to, Floridine Rallo Let's Go, New Breed Global Truth, Pastor Dow, um, Mark the Messenger, and of course, my platform. With these platforms, you're going to get a dose of reality. Biblical truth, you're going to know how to build, you're going to know how to work with your hands, and you're going to learn how to be a man, and you're going to learn how to be a woman, and most of all, you're going to know who the Most High is, because these are these are men of truth, men of honor, that have been through the fire, they've been tested with fire. Do you understand me? They're not fake. Okay, let's get to these scriptures. Deuteronomy 28. 45 to 55. Hold on a second. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. Why? Because thou hearkeneth not to the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which I commanded thee. So why our people were put in, the, in slavery in terms of the transatlantic slave trade? The transatlantic slave, slave trade was uh, pretty much our judgment from the Most High. A lot of times you'll see these Israelites on the corners in Manhattan. Uh, what is it? 31st Street or somewhere in Manhattan, right? And they always talk about the white man is the devil, right? And they like to blame the white man for everything. We don't do that over here. We fell from grace because we didn't follow the laws, statutes, and commandments. Think of this. You have parents. We all had parents, whether your parents are alive or passed away. They all had rules that we must follow. If you don't follow the rules, you get punished. Right? Okay. We didn't follow the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, so he sent judgment our way. Verse 46, and these shall, and they shall be a sign, shall be, wait, hold on, excuse me. And they shall be upon thee as a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. Because thou serveth not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore, thou shalt serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send. So who's sending the enemy? The Lord. Not because he's evil, not because he's bad, because we're evil. We're the ones that's evil. This is why, this is why it says in 2 Chronicles, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. We got to turn from our wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. That's when the most high is going to hear our prayers. That's why he don't hear our prayers. Because we're wicked. You know, that's why he's not listening. Then he'll forgive our sins and heal their land. But he's not going to do that if we wicked. It's not going to happen. So now he says, Therefore thou shalt serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee 
in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness. Isn't that what happened to us? Now, question. Those people that are claiming to be the chosen people, did they suffer this? Did they suffer these things? Nope. They didn't suffer none of these things. It says, therefore, thou shalt serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron over thy neck. Yoke of iron. Let me get that for you. Let me get that for you. Because the Bible is literally telling you what happened to us. So maybe I can save some souls because the Christian church is not helping you. The educational system is not helping you. Nobody's really helping you to become a better person, to be knowledgeable <clears throat> of what's going on. So hopefully I can give you some sense of understanding. So let me see if I could do this real quick. Let's get this because all they give us is slave movies, right? That's all they give us. Slave movies. Um, that's what they do for us. They, they don't really, they never give us anything that's positive. It's always like, we're all always a slave. They give us Kunta Kinte. They give us Mandingo. Um, that's all they do with us. You know? They don't give us anything showing us for who we really are as the chosen people of the Most High. Everything they give us is always something negative always some mess to try to keep us dumbed down and docile. They don't ever want you to think like a king. And this is why we're ratchet. This is why we're out here um, doing evil all day, selling drugs, committing crimes, killing one another. It's because we don't know who we are. If we knew who we were and we actually repented of our sins, the Most High going to heal the land. He going to turn over our captivity and put an end to this system. This system is satanic and they know who they are. And they know their time is up. Trust me, they watching me right now and they can't do a damn thing to me because of the protection of the most high that's upon me. They know that. They know it will be dire consequences to touch his anointed ones that are actually doing this work in these last days because there are many false prophets that are going out in the world. This is why when you go into the Christian church, they don't talk like me. They don't bring out this info. The real men of truth are hidden. They're not out in the public like like all these pastors, they're not like that. They're not famous like that. Nobody care for them, right? Um, let me shout out this other super chat. Let me see. Shout out to fair to fair to um none for the support. Appreciate you. All right. And if you're posting comments and hoping that I read them, understand that I am working right now. Um, if it was possible that I can read every comment. That would be great. But when you're live streaming and I'm focusing on my purpose here, there is no possible way that I'm reading a live chat all day. But I can see super chats when they come in. All right. Um, let me see. Let me get back to my frame of thought. So we were talking about the yoke of iron. Right. The yoke of iron that is on someone's neck. Right. So let's get this. Let me get these things right here real quick. And let's add this into the stream right here right so now let's get this you see this now notice what the bible says let me put all of this stuff up here because i have to make sure that you are visually seeing what they did to us and understand the history so that you're not dumbed down and docile because that's what they want they want you to be foolish so you're not going to get this from the christian church it says, therefore, thou shalt serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put, who's he? The enemy shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Do you see the note, the yoke of iron upon the neck? Why do you think as, as, as black people, right? So-called black, because we're not really black. That's a crayon color. That's what they called us. They called us the N-word. They gave us all these bywords, right? Um, why do you think we're so uh, 
how we have this love hate relationship with chains like we always want to wear the latest chain right we always want to wear jewelry with some chain or whatever the case is it's because we always been in chains we've always been in chains so we're used to having yoke of iron around our neck that's why we love having chains you understand serious that's why now of course the christian church is not going to bring this info out again they are working with the devil right so now it says in verse 49 the lord shall bring a nation against thee from far from the end of the earth as swift as the eagle flieth what is the nation that represents the eagle ladies and gentlemen you guessed it there's only one nation that represents that eagle and matter of fact all of these particular nations are in confederate against us it's all written up in the bible where they have all came together that they might uh make the name of israel be of no more it's all written up in the scriptures right so now it says uh a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand which mean we're not going to know their language a nation of fierce countenance which shall not regard the person of the old or show favor to the young, which means they're going to slaughter our babies. They're going to destroy the elderly. They're not going to have no mercy, right? And he shall eat the fruits of thy cattle and the fruits of thy land until thou be destroyed. Now, again, the most high is sending this upon us because we won't obey him. This is judgment upon us. We're the only group of people in the history of life that experienced the transatlantic slave trade. No one could debate this. I don't care about whatever happened to anybody else. There is no other atrocity done to people at the magnitude of the transatlantic slave trade. Nothing. Do you understand? Don't let society deceive you because they'll try to make other atrocities appear as if though it's either equal or more severe. No. The listen, in the transatlantic tra slave trade, fam, you had literally hundreds of millions of people dying, bro. Listen, our people were so great. Our people were so great in number. Hund listen, millions upon millions of us died just on our way to these lands. And they kept going back and forth, picking up our people. This is deep, man. They don't want y'all to know this, man. They really don't. They hate this right now. They would rather me talking about gossiping or who slept with P. Diddy right now. They don't want you to hear this. It goes on and it says, And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates until thy high and fence walls come down, wherein thou trusteth throughout all thy land. In other words, he's going to break everything down. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout the land which the Lord thy God has given thee. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body. Are y'all seeing this mess? The flesh of thy sons and the, thy daughters, which the Lord thy God has given thee in the siege and in the straightness whereof thine enemies shall distress thee. In other words, y'all going to be eating each other. Y'all ain't going to have no food, nothing. It's going to be really, really bad. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil towards his brother. Isn't that happening right now? We hate each other right now. It's all right. It's all written up in the curses. These are all curses, mind you, that are upon the people of the Most High. Now, that has to say that you're going to be cursed for all your life. If you turn around and keep the laws, now you're going to get the blessing side now. Not everybody that is of the chosen people of the Most High are under the curses. Because once you, once you repent, he's going to heal your land. But we need to repent as a collective to really get this real results. But it goes on and it says, So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil towards his brother and towards the wife of his bosom. Which means your brother is going to try to sleep with your wife. And towards the remnant of his children, which he shall leave leave 
So we, we, the family structure is going to be destroyed. Are you seeing that? The family is going to be destroyed. The black man and black woman, we're going to be separated. Yeah. And it's happening today. They did that during slavery. They would take your wife, send her to another plantation, and the husband would go to another one and they would ship your kids off somewhere else. That's why we all speak different languages. That's why some of you brothers speak French, um, Spanish, um, and various other languages. All you brothers in the Caribbean, all the Trinidadians, you know what I'm saying? All the Trinidadian brothers and sisters, the Jamaican brothers and sisters, you know what I mean? You brothers in Jamaica, you speak Patois. That's the white man's tongue. That's not a yard man thing. That's not a black man thing. You know? Oh, he's from Jamaica. No, no, no. You have the white man's tongue. All of you Trini them? Oh, I telling you, man. I telling you, bye. I go into the store. I'm going to go there just now and get me some curry and all them thing. That's how the white man talk. You took on his tongue. All the brothers and sisters in Panama. Hey, que lo que, hermano? Hey, que está usiendo? The reason why you're able to speak Spanish is because you were brought over there to the canals. You were brought over there. You were brought to DR. You were brought to Haiti. You know, all the brothers that speak French and Creole. You learn the white man's language. Are you getting it? You think that's your culture. That's your language. No, you learn the culture of the people that enslaved your people. I try tell her, Poppy. She don't listen to me, Poppy. I try tell her. She coming to my supermercado. She don't listen, Poppy. I try tell her. Hey, better, better pay her, mano. No me pegue. Tu sabe. I try tell her. So, I had to make, make y'all laugh a little bit, you know. So what we have here is a very bad situation because the black family is going to be separated. And it's happening today. All over social media, we have nothing but toxic content designed to keep us divided. Black men, black women fighting against each other all day. We hate one another. You not notice that? Like we really do. We hate one another. We despise one another. Black women are saying we're going to be single forever. I don't need no man. You got the men saying, well, I'm never marrying none of y'all. Well, we're going to all die. Because if we're not creating family, if we're not building, then we're falling right into the plan that uh, the powers that be have for us and them curses are on us heavy. Because it clearly says that we're going to really all fall apart. Verse 55, so that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat because he have nothing left him in the siege and in the straightness, right? wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee in all thy gates. So the enemy is going to be sent and cause a lot of problems. So our people endured some very, very difficult, difficult times, right? Let me see. Hold on a second. Let me get the other piece that I want to get. Let me get this. Let me read here. Okay. Um, Deuteronomy 28, 60 to 68. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all these diseases of Egypt, which thou was afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. So now the Most High is saying the diseases that was in Egypt, he's going to bring those diseases and put them upon the children of Israel. The diseases we were all afraid of. You're wondering why in the black community we have a lot of diabetes, cancers, um, obesity, all different types. of We have so many different issues. These are all a part of the curses. Do you understand? These are all a part of the curses that, that cleave unto us because we won't repent of our sins. Verse 61, also every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this, of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So now we're talking about diseases that is not even written of in the book of the law. He's going to send that on us too. Not on the other nations, on us. 
That's crazy. But it's a just judgment. This is why I'm not one that go around saying the white man is the devil because we have a lot of black devils in the black community. The Most High sent the white man and all the other nations to take you out, including the Hamites in Africa, because they are partially ones that sold you out too. Go read from Babylon to Timbuktu. Hello. Again, readers are leaders. If you're ignorant of this truth because you don't read, just that simple. Go read a book. And stop watching gossip channels all day. So it goes on and it says, um, verse 62, and ye shall be left few in number. Uh-oh. Are y'all seeing that? Few in number. Our people were multiplying so much. We were like the sand of the sea. You can't num you can't, you can't even put a number on it. That's how many of us it were. It says, and ye shall be left few in number, whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord your God. Do you see what's happening here? The Most High literally is saying he's going to destroy us, and it's happening. Look how our people are dying every single day. Police brutality, violence, crime, black-on-black -black crime. I mean, the clan don't even have to do nothing to us no more because we do everything ourselves. Gang on gang violence. I mean, think about how crazy this is, how you'll have gangs set up all over the place and they all look like each other and they all hate one another. But the gangs don't do nothing to the people that are putting them in this bondage. Make it make sense. Those are the curses. You know, I don't need to put no specific uh, gang on blast. Y'all know all the gangs. But all the prominent gangs, if you notice, their agenda is not against the other groups that put them in bondage. It's to harm themselves. Our own people are the ops. That's crazy. That's a sickness. That's one of the sicknesses that the Most High said he's going to send. Because think about this. Why would black people start gangs and then destroy each other? while the oppressor is still winning. They'll sell drugs to their own people. Because we curse, bro. So it goes on and it says, um, verse 63, and it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you. In other words, the Most High never intended for us to go through the transatlantic slave trade. Never. It, that was not his intentions. He was always one that rejoiced over us to multiply us. He said it right there. And it shall come to pass as the Lord rejoiced over you to do good and to multiply you. So the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught and ye shall be plucked from off the land whether thou goest to possess it. These are curses, man. Verse 64, and the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. Uh-oh. Did that happen to those people that claim they're the people? Were they scattered all over the earth? Hello? No, they were not because they're not the people. The Bible says, and the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, ethnic groups. So he's going to take us as a nation and scatter us all over the earth. Again, I ask the question, those people that claim they're the chosen people, have they been scattered all over the earth, lost their identity, lost their language, lost their heritage, don't even know who they are? Did that happen to them? No, it did not. This is why only the biblical Israelites can teach this truth because we're the ones with this knowledge. Everyone else is dumbed down and docile in the Christian religion. All they're doing is sing, singing church songs while this truth is not being taught in these churches. None of these pastors is bringing out this info, right? 
And notice, I don't got to talk about a particular group in any sort of negative way. All I got to do is just bring out the scriptures. The scriptures don't lie. All I got to do is just bring out the scriptures and ask you about history. Have you ever seen those people get scattered all over the earth? No. Have they been serving slavery? No. Have they lost their language? No. But we lost ours. We lost our heritage. Matter of fact, let me get that from you. Let me get that for you. Let me hold this thought right here real quick. Now, I got the reason why I got to get these things is because it's very important for educational purposes. You know? Watch this now. Let me see. Let me get this for you. Book of Jeremiah. Book of Jeremiah. Let's get this. Bring this out for you. Okay. Okay, we're reading at the top of the screen. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4 says, And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knoweth not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. Y'all think this is a joke. See, I'm breaking down these scriptures. These Christians can't do that. None of these Christians on YouTube can break down these scriptures, but the brothers in this truth. These Christians are religious, fam. They don't read the Bible. It clearly says that we're going to discontinue from our heritage, meaning your language, your culture, everything. The people who claim they're the people of the book, they didn't discontinue from anything. We did we're the ones who's lost, calling ourselves African-American, which makes no sense. How are you African and American? How are you representing two different continents? It makes no sense. America was named after a white man. Africa was named after a white man. Africonus. Do you understand me? Do your research and study, man. But when you tell people, listen, even people that are in Africa right now don't even know this. They don't even know because they already done been colonized. The colonizers already went over there and took over. Africa don't even belong in them, man. These are just real facts, man. That's why they hate me. They hate men like me that speak this truth. They despise us. Right? So now, um, where we at? Where we at? Okay. Um... And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. Isn't that exactly how we are right now? And there shall not, look, look, check, check it out. And there thou shalt serve other gods. That's what we're doing right now. He said that he's going to, you're going to get scattered and you're going to serve other gods. You're going to serve other religions. I'm not going to say those religions but let's just say you're not going to be following the god of abraham isaac and jacob you're not going to follow that god and the reason why you're going to be following these these false gods is because you don't know who you are anymore so you're going to try to blend in with everybody else right now watch this it says you shall serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone Kaaba stone, anyone? Kaaba stone, wood and stone, crosses, wood and stone, Buddha, this, that, all these different things. I'm telling you, listen, trying to get y'all the truth, you know, trying to get y'all that truth. But again, this truth is heavy. A lot of y'all might not be able to um, digest this information. It's too much, right? It goes on in verse 65. And among these nations, thou shalt find no ease. Even to this day, you have no ease in this culture, in this system. You're constantly oppressed. The first fired, the last hired. Right? Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest, but the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart 
and failing of eyes and sorrow of mine. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. Isn't that happening even today? Your life is hanging in doubt. You get up every morning, you go to work, and it's like, you don't even know what the future is going to be. It's like you're just kind of just existing. You haven't even started to live life yet. You've been existing for many, many years. Still haven't started to live your life. Right? And among the nations, let me see. And among these nations thou shalt find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest, but the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and thou shalt have no none assurance of thy life. That's happening right now to a lot of us. You fear day and night, worried about how you're going to pay your bills, how you're going to eat. Is your kids going to be able to go to college? Are you going to be able to afford the house payments? Is your job going to keep you? And it's really causing you a lot of stress. Right. A whole lot of stress. Right. Um, it says verse seven, verse seven, um, 67. In the morning thou shalt say, wait, in the morning thou shalt say, would God be, wait, would God it were that even and at evening even thou shalt say, would God, would God it were morning for the fear of thine heart wherewith thou shalt fear. And for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. He's going to bring you into Egypt again with ships, ladies and gentlemen. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold as sold unto thine enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. And no man shall buy you. That, that's what happened to us in the transatlantic slave trade. All right? Let me bring this out also. Um, I think I'm missing something. Hold on a sec. Um, I think there's one more thing I got to put out there. Okay. There's one verse I forgot to put in. My bad. Some of y'all are probably in the spirit saying, Ringo, you forgot about that one verse. This might be it. It may not be, but I want to make sure that I put this out there too. Because I don't want to forget it. But uh, I got to make sure this is here too. Can't forget Deuteronomy 2832. Deuteronomy 28, 32 says, Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the days, and there shall be no might in thine hand. That's the transatlantic slave trade, people, written of right in the Bible. Isn't that what happened to us? Our sons and daughters were given to another people. And our eyes looked with longing. We've seen it in every slavery movie. Every slavery movie. You understand? That's crazy. In every slavery movie, we've we seen these scriptures come to pass. And we saw the mothers crying for their daughters and sons. And there was no might in thine hand because we had no power. We were in bondage. So when it says in verse 68, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt, it's talking about bondage because we were in captivity in Egypt. This is why it's crazy when you see black men and women in today's day on social media pushing Egyptology. <laughs> it's amazing how y'all following the enemy. The Egyptians were destroyed. <laughs> they were destroyed by the Most High. So it's crazy to see our people trying to become Egyptians, wearing teardrop crosses, right? Uh, claiming that they can read the hieroglyphics and all this other stuff and 
they trying to get all this higher knowledge in the pyramids. Y'all really believe that y'all Egyptians now? You were in bondage in Egypt. That's why Moses was sent and said, let my people go. But the Bible says, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Egypt means bondage or house of bondage. But he's going to do that with ships. Slave ships. Slave ships. You understand? The slave ships. Ships. He's going to bring us into Egypt or into bondage by way of ships. When you study history and you study the transatlantic slave trade, we were placed on these ships like sardines stacked up on top of one another. You know? That's what happened. And in the process, we were all dying on these ships due to diseases, um, medical problems. There was feces everywhere, urine everywhere. I mean, think about it. You're on a slave ship. Ain't nobody getting up to go use the bathroom. So you're just, you're just using the bathroom right where you are. Do you see the gruesome mess that they did to us as a people? Imagine you're, you're stacked on top of each other like sardines and people are urinating and it just flows down and goes everywhere. And it's a rank odor, feces everywhere. And you're on this ship that ain't going to get to the dock until a long time. So people were literally dying of disease and they had to just take them and throw them overboard. If you study the history records, it is said that behind these slave ships, sharks would follow because they were throwing bodies off every other day. Every other day, they were just dumping bodies. So the sharks knew they were going to get food. They used to take our babies and, and use them as alligator bait. Study history. But I'm the bad guy because I'm teaching this truth. Again, they would rather me do celebrity gossip and focus on a bunch of bochinche and nonsense rather than bring out these, these issues. Now, I could talk about every other topic and give a breakdown. I can do that. But what the algorithm really prefer is if you just keep the people dumbed down. Yo, you heard it, man? Yo, beat. Yo, P. Diddy. Yo, he was sleeping with, um, you know what I'm saying? Um, that Christian rapper. Yeah, they had a relationship. Ain't that, ain't that so good? Imagine. That's what they want me to tell you. They want me to do that. Keep you dumbed down so that you don't have no knowledge. So it says, The Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Talking about your land. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. Sold. Going once, going twice, going twice. Sold. Remember how they had our people on the auction block? Selling our women, selling our children. Looking for a mandingo slave. It says you're going to be sold as bond men and bond women. And no man shall buy you. But Ringo, you said they're going to, they're going to, you're being sold. No. No one's going to free you. When it says... You shall be sold unto thine enemies as bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. That means to free you. Because if you understand anything about slavery, if you understand the history and the language of the culture back then, in order for you to be a free man or free woman as a slave, someone had to buy your freedom. Do you understand me? Meaning, if I was a slave to the Jefferson family and I worked for 20 years slaving, in order for me to be free, a rich uh, man, whether he's a white man or whatever the case is, would have to come to the, the, the um, what did I say, the Jefferson family, whatever family. He would have to sit down with the Jefferson family and say, hey, this particular slave that you got, he has been very faithful to you for many, many years. I would like to buy his freedom. Now, I don't know if you won't do that now. I mean, Jeffrey have been a slave in our plantation for many, many years. And I just don't think that I would sell him. Well, uh, my good man, I would pay a very, very good wage for this particular slave. For his freedom, that is. 
Wells, uh, how much wouldst thou willingst to pay? Well, uh, I can give you a certain amount of gold, and I think that should be substantial for his freedom. We have the contract right here, and it can be written in law. Okay. All right. I, I see we has a deal. Uh, Jeffrey, you go on now with this here's man. He has bought your freedom. And that's so. That's how it was if someone bought your freedom. So when it says in the scripture, and no man shall buy you, it's speaking of the language of the time. The language of the time says no man is going to buy your freedom. So once you're sold, nobody came by to say, hey, no, I don't want them to be sold. I'll buy their freedom. Hey, ma'am, you could go and walk. No, you were sold. And that's it. You had to serve your time on the plantation. That's how we all got the names we got. Uh-oh. Oh, your last name that you got right now? Oh, you got that from the slave master. The last thing that you got as a so-called black man, black woman today is not your last name. It represents the plantation that your ancestors were on. I know you don't want to hear this truth, but it's the truth. Whatever your last name is, if you go through history, there was a plantation with that person, that family, that bloodline. And your relatives were on that plantation. That's why y'all all have the name of the slave master. So as a man and woman today, why do you think Malcolm, call his name Malcolm X? Are you putting it together now? That's why he says his name is Malcolm X. Because he didn't represent a last name. <laughs> Serious truth, man. You know? So you're going to be sold as bondmen and bondwomen and no man shall buy you. And this is what we as a people have to understand. So now when you go back to 2 Chronicles 7, 14, and it says, if my people, which is talking about us, right? Somebody said, well, what about white people? Could white people, you know, follow the most high? Could white people come in? Could, could, could white people follow the laws? Yeah, they can. They, they're the ones that can be grafted in. But they got to follow the most high in spirit and truth. And... They have to acknowledge the chosen people of the Most High, who is us. We're the ones who's supposed to teach them. You understand? See, I'm not supposed to be going to the white man so he could teach me what the Bible say. It don't work like that. The white man got to come to the Israelites so that we could teach them. They're not supposed to be teaching you. So when you look at these Christian pastors and they're teaching this and teaching that, they, they, they're not teaching you anything. They're teaching you a watered down, uh, a Roman, a, 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 a watered down Roman Catholic version of Christianity. That's what they're giving you. They're not giving you the truth. That's why when you go into these churches, you see a white Jesus that's painted. The Messiah is not white. The Messiah is a black man. It's written up in the Bible. What? No, it's not. Yes, it is. It's written in the Bible. What are you talking about? You want me to get it for you? Okay. It's in the Bible. It's crazy how in Christianity, they don't teach none of this, man. They don't teach anything. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Let's go to Revelations. Get this thing real fast. I'm going to start from I'm going to start from verse 8. A lot of times when brothers speak, they just go right to the the main parts. I don't like to do that. I like to kind of read a little bit. Um get this add this to the stream okay okay revelations chapter 1 verse 8 through 16 um there's also another scripture i just don't know it off the top of my head if anybody got that particular scripture um you can post it into the, the, the chat, right? Because um, there's two scriptures that identify the Messiah. But I want to read this, right? Revelations chapter 1, verse 8 through 16. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. I, John, who also am the brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the isles that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit of the Lord's day, on the Lord's day, excuse me, and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia and Ephesus and in Serena and unto Pergomus and unto Thy Ratera and unto Sardis and unto Philadelphia and unto Lod Lodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks and in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot. So what he's basically saying is, I saw this figure clothed down to the foot, right? And it's Daniel 6, 10, 6. Let me, let me see if I can go get it. Because I know it's in the book of Daniel, but... I didn't, um, I was busy do looking for this. Let me go grab that real fast. Um, cause you have to make sure that you're edifying the people fully. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Um, okay. All right. Yeah. That's exactly what I needed. Right. So let me get that. I'll read that afterwards. So let me get back to this. Okay. Um, okay. Clothed with a... Oh. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about with paps with a golden girdle. 
his head and his hairs were white like wool. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Somebody said, but it says that his head was white, Ringo. See, you're slow. First of all, nobody is white. Talking about facial hair. Because the subject is hair. And when you read, ladies and gentlemen, I would hope that you understand the basics, right? When you read a sentence and it says his head and, once you see and, that connect clauses and phrases together. And, which means whatever's going on after is connected to that head. So if he says his head and his hairs. So we're talking about hair. So he's talking about his beard. His head, meaning facial hair, and his hairs, right, were white like wool. His head and hairs, his hairs, 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 listen, hairs, hairs. He's talking about the hair on his head and his beard. White like wool. Just the basics, you know, shout out to my teacher when I was a kid, Miss Hannadale. I'll never forget you. You always taught us how to read to understand. That's one thing I loved about that woman. I don't know if she's still alive, but I remember when I was in school as a kid coming up. She didn't just teach us how to read. She taught us how to read to understand. She she like she pressed us about that. She said it's not just about opening a book and reading it, but reading it to understand understand and to me she helped a lot of kids and I still remember her grown man I still remember my teacher when I was a little kid because she's so she was very attentive to all the kids in the class she would come right next to you and help you she wasn't like these teachers today and I'm not dissing all teachers but a lot of teachers be under a lot of stress and they're not really teaching the youth right so now it says his head and his hairs were white like wool. Now, who has woolly hair? Who on the earth have woolly hair? The white man? No. Nope. They don't have woolly hair. Respectfully speaking, do black, do black people struggle with lice in their hair? Got bugs in your hair and whatnot going crazy? We don't got those problems. We don't got those problems. White people have those problems. Respectfully. And I ain't trying to really insult anybody. But at the end of the day, their hair is similar to that of a dog, fam. I'm just keeping it a buck. That's just, it is what it is. You can get mad if you want. You know what I mean? But their hair is similar to that of a dog. And then the same issues that dogs have in terms of ticks and fleas and and, and bugs and whatnot, they be having them same issues, fam, with their hair. They got to literally go get their hair turned, like, taken out. You know? So now, it says his head and his hair, his hairs, were white like wool. And white and as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. That's why he says, if my sheep, which are called by my name, you're wondering why he says sheep? That's another metaphor for hair because we have hair like sheep's hair. If you really think about it, when he says, if my sheep, or my sheep hear my voice and, and they, they know me and they will not follow the voice of a stranger. That's why it says sheep because his sheep, he, he, He's obviously we're not sheep, but sheep follow their master and sheep. And we have hair like sheep, hair like wool. You ever have wool clothing? If you look at the, the wool, that's how our hair is. So it says his head and his hairs were like white was his hairs was white like wool, as white as snow, 
and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. What? Like brass? As if though, so first of all, you take brass, you ever look at a copper coin? Now burn that in a furnace. That's a dark skinned man. The Messiah was a dark skinned brother. That's a fact. <laughs> no, they were white. Why do y'all keep doing this to me? Go back to the, see, I don't want to go through all these scriptures because we're going to be here forever. Go back to the miracle that happened with Moses and them where he put his hand in his bosom took it out it was white as snow leprous then he put it back and it was normal look at the curse that was put on Miriam where she was white as snow well how could she be white as snow if she was white already make that make sense if white people are already pale and lack melanin how could she be white as snow? These are all black people. Do you understand? Everybody that was in the Bible is all black black men and black women. This is what they hide from you. This is why when they give you these Jesus films, they make the entire cast white. And if there's a black person, they're a slave. I mean, think about the region where they are at. It was nothing but black people there, man. But they want us to be dumbed down. They really don't want you to know this truth, guys. I'm telling you, they don't want you to know this, man. It's crazy. Like I said, I could go through a thousand scriptures proving this type of stuff, but I, I'm going to be here all day, man. I'm going to be here all day. So his feet was like fine brass as if they burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. Isn't that crazy? I don't need to read the rest. But my point is, I just wanted to get that part, right? So now let me go to the other one. Let me go to the other one. Let's get this. Daniel chapter 10, verse 6 says, His body also was like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire. Now we saw in, in the other scripture, his eyes was red like fire, right? And his arms, notice his arms now, and his feet, like in color, to polish brass. Are y'all not seeing that? And the voice of his words, like the voice of, of a multitude, which means when he spoke, it was like a multitude voice, like a delay. It sounded like doubled and tripled his voice, a powerful voice. Is the Christian church telling you that the Messiah was a black man? Of course not. They're not going to tell you that. They lied to you. So now again, with all of that said, now you can understand 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, when it says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. We as a people have to repent of our sins. Is, is Kanye perfect? No, we're all striving towards perfection. Even the Messiah, the Bible tells us to be ye perfect, even as your heavenly father is imperfect, is it, perfect. The only way we can be perfected is through the scriptures. You understand? Yea, been speaking a lot of truth. The world make him seem crazy. Anytime you're a man that speak truth, they're going to label you as crazy. They always do this to people. They'll say I'm crazy because I'm speaking this truth. That's what they do to us men. 
you know? So now let's listen back to Kanye, hear what he had to say, and break this down. If you're now joining the show, fam, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. Let's go. The yeah. difference, though, when yeah. you hear, and music is like life, you know what I'm saying? And life, you're kind of you're, you're kind of like this, you know what I'm saying? And some people try to put you into a yesterday mode. You know, at one point, yay, we hear, and this is all you, we hear, you know, Jesus is king. A yesterday mode. In other words, they try to put yay in a yesterday mode. In other words, don't listen to him. He's this, he's that, he's a problem. They try to hold you to your past. Was there times when Ye said some off the wall stuff? Yeah, but how, how, how many of us haven't said off the wall stuff? Come on now. We hear this, but that's all you. Then there's sometimes you just want to say, man, not fuck it, but you just want to say, man, this is what I'm feeling right now. Are you in that space where you're comfortable enough to say, this is where I am right now. I'm still a man of God. I'm, Jesus still is king, but this is vultures right now. This is where I am. It is, but I, you know, I, I have my issues with Jesus. There's a lot of stuff I went through that I prayed and I didn't see Jesus show up. So I had to put my, uh, my experience in this world, my experience with my children, my experience with other people, my experience with my account, my experience with my brand, and my experience with the level of music that I was dealing with in my own hands. And there's nothing wrong with what he said because we all need to do that. He came, listen, Ye exposed the false Messiah that Christians follow. He didn't disrespect the Messiah. He's trying to make people understand that we follow in religion when we are supposed to be building. We gotta learn how to mobilize and put our resources together and start to go out here and do what we need to do in order to make things happen. We busy praying about stuff that we should be working on. We should be working towards getting things in order for ourselves. The other nations are not gonna do nothing for us. The white man is not doing nothing for the black community. And it's sad that in the black community, we keep looking at, um, we keep looking for the white man to give us a handout. Think about this and think about how the black community is. When you lose your job, you lose whatever, what's the first thing we do? We go look for public assistance, welfare. We look for handouts. We look for the white man to take care of us. And the white man been taking care of black people for so long, that's why black people was in the ghettos, in the slums, and they can't get out because they're dependent upon the system. They haven't developed a spirit of discipline to work towards getting out of their problems but they all believe in Jesus. Imagine, these people believe, they all believe in Jesus, they all claim to be Christians, they all go to church, but they're on welfare. Well, if Jesus is so good, why are all those people in bondage still? If he's answering all these prayers, why the black community is in poverty? Number one, because the black community haven't repented. Again, the scriptures... The scripture clearly tell us, right? Where in the world it is? I done lost the damn scripture. I don't even know where I put it. I don't know where it is. Here we go. If my people are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. The reason why that can't happen is because number one, we, we have not repented. We're too busy thinking that the Messiah is a genie in a bottle that we could just rub and he's going to come through and give us whatever we want. That's not how it works. Even parents don't do that. If you have a real wise, good parent, they're not just going to do whatever you want. They'll tell you no, or they'll ignore you and make you suffer a little bit when you're out of pocket. Right? So people upset with Ye and they calling him crazy and all sorts of madness. Why? Because he's out here speaking something that a lot of people out here are scared to talk about. A lot of you are scared. You wouldn't even talk about the things Ye talk about. You'll be too afraid of losing your job. You know? And that's why women don't respect us brothers because we're not really building nothing. 
We're not doing anything. That's why they gotta, that's why women gotta go out here and be masculine and be a man. Because you guys are not being men. You're not leading the community. You go to any predominantly black community, the men are too busy smoking weed and, and drinking henny while the women are at work. <laughs> the women go to the nine to five while their Pookie and Ray Ray are sitting home. And I ain't talking about the good brothers that are on point. The good brothers that are on point doing what they got to do, it, it don't apply to you. I'm talking about men in general and whoever it applied to, it applies to you. Let's stop being babies and kids and recognize real talk. You might be a good brother. You might be on point. But as listen, a lot of guys out here are not on point. They're not. They're doing dirt. And the women are fed up. You think our women want to be at a nine to five right now? Do you really think the black women want to be at a nine to five? Do you really think the black women want to be at a nine to five every single day? She don't want to be there. She would rather be home. She would rather be home and know that she got a man, a king, that's out there getting, doing what he got to do. But because us brothers have not repented and got right with the most high, our women are out of order too. Why? Because we out of order. We cannot sit and just keep blaming the woman. Yeah, the woman is out of pocket. Yeah, the woman is doing dirt. But what about us? Don't tell me you guys are all saints. You're not. If we, listen, if our women are out of pocket, it's because we, we, we out of pocket. There's no way that us brothers, the majority, are on point and the Messiah haven't healed the land. Makes no sense. If all of us brothers were on point and in this truth, these scriptures would be fulfilled. The land would be healed. The Messiah would do what he needed to do. The Most High would do what he needed to do. But it's not being done. Because men are not doing what they got to do. You know? And you might be saying, oh, you're just saying that to, to, to make black women feel happy. Fam, when I'm ready, I go in on these women, bro. What are you talking about? I just told you that these women are out of order. These women are out of order. They're out of pocket. They're doing a bunch of madness. But at the same time, when are we as men going to take accountability for us? If our women are out of pocket, it's because we're out of pocket. Let me bring that out, man. Let me bring that out because it's like you guys, you guys stay hiding, you know? Let me bring that out. Because y'all think this is a game. Let me show you what the problem is. Let me show you what the problem is. Matter of fact, let me bring this whole this whole point out here so that y'all can see this, man. This is the last scripture I'm going to get, man, because like I said, if I stay in these scriptures, we're going to be here all day teaching. You know what I mean? And there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that I don't know if people are going to watch the whole stream on the playback because it says average viewer retention right now is 19 minutes, which means... The average person that's watching this live stream watch for 19 minutes and then they click off. They go their way. So all of those people, they're not getting the info. We've been streaming now for about um, two hours and two hours and 54 minutes. So all of this info, people, the average person only watched 19 minutes. They didn't get no knowledge. They just listened in a little bit and then they left. And this is why our people are dumbed down and docile because they're not staying long enough to get the message. This is why a lot of YouTubers only make eight minute videos to try to get something, get your attention for eight minutes because they know you're going to leave. You know? And it's sad. This is why we're never going to be able to make it because we don't want to learn the truth. But let me get this for you. Right? Ecclesiast Ecclesiasticus uh, 26.23 says, A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man, but a godly woman is given to him that feareth the Lord. So when you think about this, if our women are wicked, it's because we wicked. 
So if we have a lot of women out here that are just wicked, out of control, and rebellious, it's because we have more wicked men in the world today that are amongst us. Because it says, but a godly woman is given to him that fear the Lord. So if men are fearing the Lord and doing what they got to do, the women are going to follow suit. The women are going to do what they got to do. Right? Let's get this. Let's get this. Ecclesiasticus 26. Um, we're reading from verse 20 all the way to 26, I believe it is. No. Yeah. Okay. Verse, okay, to 26. All right. It says, When thou hast gotten a fruitful possession through all the field, sow it with thine own seed, trusting in the goodness of thy stock. So thy race, which thou leaveth, shall be magnified, having the confidence of their good descent. And harlot, notice what the Bible is saying now, and harlot, a 304 HOE, shall be counted as spittle. But a married woman is a tower against death to her husband. You see that? A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man, but a godly woman is given to him that fear of the Lord. A dishonest woman contenteth shame, but an honest woman will reverence her husband. She'll respect him. A shameless woman shall be counted as a B-I-T-C-H. That's what the Bible really says. If you, if you really pay attention and understand the word and the history, a dog, female dog, B-I-T-C-H, right? It says it right there in the Bible. A shameless woman shall be counted as a B-I-T-C-H, a dog, right? And those that don't know, the proper term for a female dog is a B-I-T-C-H. That's the proper English word. That's not cussing. That's not no. It's just like the proper word for a donkey is A-S-S. -S. It's all in the Bible. But she that is shamefaced will fear the Lord. A woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all. But she that dishonoreth him in her pride shall be counted ungodly of all. Do you see how the Bible speaks of women? So in order for there to be good women, there must be good men. So if we have a lot of ungodly, rebellious, wicked women in today's day, and we do have them, it's because the majority of our men, melanated men, have not repented. They're wicked. They're evil. You get it? This is why we have so many problems. So if the men don't change their ways, we're going to continue to have these problems. We're going to continue to have these problems. So when it says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, us brothers got to be doing this thing first, man. That's the only way he's going to heal the land. But when you try to teach these men this, first thing they do is blame the woman. Why? Because you're doing the same thing Adam did in the Garden of Eden. As soon as Adam got caught, the first thing he did is blame the woman. The woman that thou gave me, she beguiled me. She gave me to eat. We know women brought sin in the world, but at the end of the day, the man had the responsibility to guard the garden. You know? And that's just the truth. Let me see. Okay, let's get back to the tape with Ye. Hear what he got to say. Like, a, a lot of times I just feel like in our society, in America, you know, people, Christians, we depend on Jesus so much that we won't put the word in ourselves. And the main thing that really that I, I don't rock with is like, it's just always like, I'm going to pray for you. And it's just like, you can actually physically do something yourself too more than just pray and we're so in this mentality that that's all that needs to happen but we ain't we ain't praying our way out of prison mm -hmm. we ain't praying our way out of the abortion clinics we ain't praying our way to get our land back our land back what Ye is basically saying is that we need to get to work we busy praying when we got a lot of problems in the community we, busy, we have a slave mentality, man. We busy praying to Jesus to come fix all these problems 
when women are spending a billion dollars on hair every year. Women are literally spending billions of dollars on hair and weave and makeup. You know what I mean? Men are spending billions of dollars on lonely fans and cash app and women to see pictures of their feet. This is what guys are doing right now. Women are literally becoming millionaires on lonely fans because of thirsty men. Listen, guys, all the problems we're having with women is our fault. You could talk about the modern woman all day, the modern, modern, modern all day. And trust and believe, I would agree with you. She's a problem. <laughs> but guess what? We the reason why she's like that. If men stop going to the strip club, women won't be there. If men would stop following all these Insta thoughts all day, those women wouldn't be there. If men would stop liking all these photos and lusting, these women won't be there. If men stop subscribing to Lonely Fans, these women won't be there. If men would just stop simping for JJ and stop taking women on dinner dates and spoiling them with gifts, these women would get their act together. We're the problem. We have too many simps in the world. Too many men are simps. That's just the way it is, man. Too many men, too many men are simps. Too many of us guys will do anything for some vagina. We'll sell our soul, man. You guys got to be so mature in today's day that you're not thinking about vagina like that. I'm not saying don't be attracted to women no more. We're men. Let's, let's be real. What I'm saying is they got to be, we have to have purpose as men where we're really focused, fam. Like really, really, really focused on our purpose and building. Women are going to always be there. And like I said, when you're really building, women are going to follow you. Our women are just waiting on us to do what we got to do. That's why they talk ish about us, to get us pissed off. They really fed up. Trust and believe that. They really want They really want to do the right thing. They really do. But why? Why? You're not doing your job as a man, bro. That's why the woman got to go out there and get that job and that business. Because she can't depend on you. Y'all not seeing the bigger picture? No, I understand. I understand, bro. You would like for the woman to work with us. You would like for the woman to submit. You would like for the... And that's, I'm not giving these women excuses to do what they're doing. What I'm trying to show you is the reason why the women are out of pocket is because we are not working. We're too busy praying to Jesus. We're too busy praying when we should be building these houses and putting boots on the ground and getting our hands dirty. But instead, you're using your hands to beat off. And you're wondering why these women got masculine energy. It's sad, man. You got a lot of guys that are living with a woman right now. They're living with a woman. A woman is the one housing them. And I'm not saying, you know what I mean, if you got a woman and you fell on hard time and she, she kind of picked up the slack because she have a job. I'm not saying a situation like that is bad and you're not a man. What I'm saying is you got a lot of dudes out here that literally are dependent on a woman right now. And they're not even trying to do nothing, bro. I don't know about you, fam. But if I got to depend on a woman, I don't feel like a man, bro. I really don't. I really don't feel... I, I Listen, if I got to sit around and wait on a woman... To buy me clothes, to buy me shoes. If the woman is working and I'm home, I won't feel like a man, bro. I won't feel like a man, bro. And if I could just be a little transparent with y'all, because again, I keep everything 100, right? I'll keep everything 100 with y'all, right? I don't sugarcoat. Back in the day, I did uh, kitchen remodeling. Self-employed. Some people say when people say they're self-employed, that means they're broke. Not necessarily. I was making very good money, right? But things started to go downhill. Now, back then, my wife was always working. She was working. I was doing my thing. She was doing her thing. But something happened 
with the trades, like like doing kitchen remodeling, because that's what I was doing, kitchen remodeling, bathroom remodeling. I could turn your whole house into a palace, make it beautiful. It started getting slow. I would get a gig, make 10 bands here, 12 bands there, and I'll be straight. And then I would have to go hang out around Home Depot, Lowe's, give out cards. Hey, you need kitchen remodeling. You need this. You need that. To try to get, you know, some business. Because once I can get a client and they want me to work, I'm straight. You know what I mean? I'm good. But it started getting slow. You had a lot of Mexicans. They started joining together. They would get a truck. And they'll be parked out. You had Mexicans that would do this. And Africans that would do this. You had Mexicans and Africans. They would be po post up outside of the home improvement stores. And they'll have a big truck with like two other vans. And they working together. So while I'm trying to do what I got to do to get customers, they stealing all the customers. And because it's a team, they're able to work faster. Whereas I was doing all the kitchen remodeling by myself. I could, I could do all the work by myself, but it's going to take a little longer. So I would have to work with the client, with the house or whatever the case is, and let them know it's just me doing this, you know? So it got difficult. Um, I was unable to um, keep up with the demand because they would be able to do the job quicker and at a lower fee where I had to boost my price up because it's just one person doing this work. So I eventually had to phase out of that. And I would do like side things here and there, paint people places, do some like cart hair, cause I'm, I'm a skilled trade barber. And I would do that. And my wife had her job. And I can recall, I would be home on certain days and I wouldn't even feel like a man, bro. Because the money that I used to make, I was in making it. We're talking about many years back. I'm trying to give you some history being transparent with you to show you what I'm talking about. Now, she always held things down and whatnot. She's, not, she's nothing like these women today. Nothing. She's 100% the opposite. <laughs> but I can recall, while I'm trying to figure out how to make some extra money, I didn't feel like a man, bro. I didn't feel like I didn't feel like a dude, bro. I felt I felt like a piece of shit, bro. Like seriously. Because it's like she's doing her thing. Yeah, she's holding it down. But I'm like, I'm the man. I'm supposed to be holding it down. You get what I mean? So I watched her do her thing and I just felt bad, man. Like I, I just didn't feel right, man. Like here I am home. And I was not no Pookie and Ray Ray. Nothing like that. But what I'm trying to show you is that as men, there's no way you could tell me that you feel like a man while a woman is working and you struggling. There's no way you could tell me you feel like a man, bro. And a lot of you guys either been in that situation and you know what I'm talking about and then you got on your feet. And I can remember, because I always wanted to work for myself, but I had to swallow my pride and go get a J-O-B. And I remember I went and asked a couple of guys. I was like, yo, bro, the kind of work you doing, man, how I can get that job? And he put me on. He said, yo, here's this thing, address, go down to this place, boom, boom, boom. And, um, you know what I mean? Apply over there. You probably got to take an exam and whatnot. So I went and I did that, did what I had to do. I had to go through the training classes and all this other stuff. I didn't want to go through all of that because I, I, I never wanted to work for somebody. But I had to do what I had to do because it was like I couldn't I couldn't just keep going like that. It's like I felt like like I failed in life. And every man will feel like that if they're under a woman. You should not be there. Now, if you have a good woman and she's holding you down till you get on track, that's cool. But you have a lot of guys that don't do nothing. So I had to go do something and relieve my wife of going to this job. You know what I mean? And that's around the time 
Uh, let me see. I think that's around the time before or after. No, you know what? That happened around the time. Matter of fact, what made it even worse is that's around the time when she had she had our she had got pregnant and we had our first kid. She was pregnant. She had her we had our first daughter and that's when everything started going downhill for me. And not really downhill, but the money was just not there no more. It was just not there. And I had to do something. Baby is there. Wife is there. She's on maternity leave. We struggling. See, I'm giving you real talk. That's why I'm transparent. You ain't going to get this on no other platform. Everybody's fake. Everybody on social media is 100% fake. They act perfect. I keep it a buck because I want you to relive and show you where you were or what you may have experienced so that we can all relate. Because I'm no different than any of you. So the baby is there. I'm like, look, I got to do something. I got to man up. I got to do something. I cannot sit here. She on maternity leave. The money not coming in the way it is. I'm sitting here struggling. We got a baby here. Nah, I got to do something. And I went out there, got the job, did what I had to do. And then from there, it's like it sparked a fire. And I started to elevate in the company going up, 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 up in job titles. And to the point where she ain't have to work no more. She ain't have to work no more. You see what I mean? She ain't have to work no more because she had to take care of the baby. So we had to really agree and say, look, you can't keep doing this. And something that had happened with her job, too. With uh, what's that mayor that that. Uh, Giuliani, I think it was Giuliani. Giuliani ended uh, off track betting in New York City. Where the only way you can bet is, I guess you have to go down to the uh, the place where they actually, the horses race to do it. But she worked for OTB. Let's just say that. And when he shut that, when the mayor shut that down, man, everybody lost their jobs. So right when that happened, right when her job got shut down, I already done had mine. You get what I'm saying? So it's like everything happened accordingly and we were safe. And I started to hold up everything on my own. She wanted to go back and get another job. I was like, no, we need you to take care of these kids. We need for you to take care of these kids the right way. Because if you're at work, who's taking care of the kids? You see what I mean? This is what family does. So what I'm trying to show you is they divided the black family by making the black woman work, making the black man stay over here, and we're divided. But I eventually relieved her from working to go into a nine to five so she could focus on these kids. Because that's what a man is supposed to do. And that's what women want. They don't want to be at no nine to five. They would they would love to have a guy that's doing everything so that she could focus on the kids. As long as she's really doing her job at home, there's nothing wrong with that. But I feel that as ladies, even if you're a stay-at-home mom or whatever the case is, you should have a man that is teaching you skills so that you're able to earn money even when you're at home. You get what I'm saying? This way, there's something in place that if something was to happen to that man, you know how to survive. Because remember, you don't want to be out of the workforce so long to the point where you don't know what to do if something happened. So I always try to teach men that if you have a woman, get her involved in whatever business you're in so that she know how to do it. So if something happened to you, she can do what she need to do. Just like if you practice in polygyny in terms of having more than one wife, you ought to be able to turn whatever it is you do into a business where all your wives learn the business so that they can now make money too. 
It's not like they're doing their own thing, working for somebody else at a nine to five, but they work for you. That's the way it's supposed to be. A man's wife should be working for her husband, not another guy. Given 12 hours of her day to somebody else. You know? That's just the way it is. Now, I'm not here to say being self-employed is a problem. I don't know which section of the video you're on. Maybe you're a little bit behind. I don't know if you're up to speed on the live stream. Make sure you refresh your page, everyone, so that you're up to speed. But, um... I'm not here to say that if a person is self-employed that they're broke. What I'm here to say is that a lot of times when people say they're self-employed, normally you're not getting a paycheck. So you make money as you go. You're self-employed, but you make money as you go, depending on what you got. And a lot of times people say they got a business. And when you would ask them, well, where's your business? They don't, they can't show you it. So how do you make money? Well, I, I have a little business. Well, where is it? I want to support it. They don't even have it. So this is why people normally say, if someone say they're self-employed, that they're broke. All you got to do is just say that you're a business owner. That's it. You know, as long as you're fending for yourself and you're making money, that's all that matter. You got freedom. That's what everybody should want and desire. But until then, you have to have a nine to five. Right? So... As men, women need to see us building. That's what Kanye is trying to teach. That's what Kanye is trying to share with us. But we're not listening to him. We're too busy trying to nitpick from his interview. And also, um, that particular interview is coming from, I think it's called Big Boy TV Channel. The link to the full video is in the description if you want to support that channel. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. I'm not reviewing their entire video, but, uh, you know, credit to the channel for the interview. Um, they gave Ye an opportunity to even speak his piece because normally most people don't even have them have him on their platform out of fear. You know. But um, my point is. By me. Feeling the way I felt when my wife was working, when I was kind of down it pushed me to go do something because I didn't feel like a man. So I know for a fact that if a brother is not working and he's living under a woman, there's no way you could tell me you feel like a man. You don't feel like a man, bro. You feel weak. Even if your woman is saying everything's okay, I got you, it doesn't matter. You still don't feel like a man, bro. The only way you will feel like a man is when you go out there to provide for your family. That's the only way. You got to gain a sense of dignity. And purpose. And when that happened, it really jump started my engine on understanding more about manhood and family development and more. It taught me a lot. That's why I'm able to teach and teach on topics about family and 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 providing for your family and so and so forth. No woman of mine will be working at some place. Because she's going to understand how to do what I do. So that if something happened to me, she can go continue doing what I've always been doing. And be successful at it. That's how it's supposed to be. And the fear that many women have of being a stay-at-home mom is that if something happened to the man, like she's stuck. Like, what is she going to do? Do you have savings? Do you have some insurance, like, that's not going to last forever. So what is she going to do? Go back to work? You have to teach the women you have how to set up businesses that can earn. Do you understand? Get into different things. Get into real estate. Get into clothing. Get into fragrances and soaps. And there's so many different things you could get into. But it should be something that you love to do. Something that you could get up every morning and feel happy and proud to do. That's what Ye is trying to teach us, man. We, we're not listening because we figure he got money. Who is him to talk? You know, first of all, Ye said this before. I, I can't quote him verbatim, 
But Ye said before in some interview, I don't know which interview it was, but there was an interview where Ye said something along the lines of, fam, if I wanted to, I could have just go live on an island somewhere and say F all y'all and just go about my business. Forget about this world. Forget about the system. Forget about black people. I don't care. I got money. He said that in the interview one time. That if it was up to him, if he was really grimy like that, he'll just say, forget everybody. I'm going to go do my own thing. But he ain't doing that. He's still speaking truth. And y'all condemning him because he can't quote a Bible scripture. Everything in life is not about quoting Bible scriptures all day, man. It's about doing the work. People react to the work. When they see the work, that's what's going to make them respect you, man. The only reason why people support me is because they see me do the work. They see me put in the work. That's why they support. If I'm not doing no work, nobody's supporting nothing. They're going to look at me like a crazy lunatic. Like, what, what, how you here expecting work? How, how you how you expecting people to support you and you ain't putting in no work? Well, how come nobody don't support my show? Because you don't work. You ain't giving the people no life lessons. You ain't feeding their spirit. You feed them gossip all day. My channel give you a balanced nutrition of spiritual health, mental health. I talk about current events. I talk about celebrity news. I don't just do no damn gossip. I break down videos and make sense of situations. But I also stay focused on my core values with these scriptures with the most high to teach people truth, to stimulate thought. Because I know a lot of you out there, you may not know the most high. You may have never even read the Bible. And I get it. But as men and women, especially in the black community, they're attacking men like Ye because he crossed the line. He 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 said some things that men of his caliber are not supposed to say. See, if I had the money like Ye, and I'm speaking the things that I'm speaking, I wouldn't even be here. They would have got rid of me. They would have got rid of me already because I would have too much influence, too much power. But see, when you got that kind of money, you can start your own media company. And this is why I don't understand, what, especially with a lot of these YouTubers that makes all this money, millions and millions of dollars. You would think that these guys would have their own media company or at least come together to build one. And still to this day, nobody's doing that. Nobody's doing that, but they all claim to be millionaires. How many YouTubers you see claim that they're all millionaires? Well, if y'all all millionaires, right? Number one, why y'all still asking for people to support the show, right? Number one. And also, why haven't y'all all come together as a collective to build a media empire? Whereas we don't have to depend on all of these social media sites. Think about it. We're the ones with the ability. We're the ones producing the content. So if we had the funding and the backing of men coming together to build our own media empire to compete, that would be monumental. But we're not doing that. We depend on the system. So we're at the system's mercy. We will always be at the system's mercy. You know? Now, of course, through YouTube and various platforms, you got a, a lot of reach, but you're limited due to the algorithm suppressing you, favoring certain people over you. So it's not really a fair business. I mean, the information that I'm sharing here, I should have 100,000 views every time I go live, but that's not happening because I'm not entertaining you with BS. When you entertain people with BS and nonsense, you get all the views. When you teach the truth, you don't get no views. This is why people sell out in order to make money. It's because the people that like the messages don't support the message. Remember, 
the lights need to stay on. If 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 nobody listen, if nobody supports the show, the lights turn off like this. Watch this. Lights turn off. Bills got to be paid. Right? Bills got to be paid. So if nobody's supporting the show, then guess what? The lights are turned off. And this is why a lot of people sell out in order to get paid because you got to eat, right? Let me turn this back on. It's going to turn on my other lights. I got to turn those off. Hold on a second. Okay. All right. Reason why a lot of content creators sell out is because they're not eating. So it's like, damn, I'm not making no money. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to join everybody else and do what everybody else is doing in order to eat. So if I got to sell my soul, then that's what I'm going to have to do. And people doing it right now. See, I haven't sold my soul. I haven't done that. But other content creators did that already. They sold their soul already. And, and it's sad when people be like, just continue pushing the truth, pushing the truth. Yeah, just continue. Just, just you know, just continue. That sounds nice, but are you supporting those people? Are you supporting those people? Because, see, my goal, my goal is not just to be focused on myself. My goal is to blow up so much so on social media that I could put people on. Have people working. Teaching people. There's so many different plans and things that I have in my mind because I can see it happening. Some of you may not be able to see this because the way you think, but I can see way down the line, movie production, movie production companies, music video companies, producing TV shows, producing shows for Netflix. There's so many things going on in my mind, man. It's going to take like-minded people, man. It's going to take people that actually have plans, ideas, and have business mindset, man. Because it's very difficult to get people to think like that. A lot of people have like, and you know, it's no offense to nobody, but a lot of people have a poverty mindset. They don't want to go no higher than where they are. They don't want to elevate no higher. They, they just comfortable. That's not how you're going to build generational wealth, man. We got to, first of all, get our people out of bondage. And that's what Ye is trying to get us to focus on. Listen to what he said right here. Listen to this. Let's pray. And we're so in this mentality that that's all that needs to happen. But we ain't, we ain't praying our way out of prison. Mm -hmm. We ain't praying our way out of the abortion clinics. We ain't praying our way to get our land back that was always ours after gentrification, after the Harlem uh, Renaissance and Black Wall Street was burned mm -hmm. to the ground. And that's what they're doing in the black community right now. All this gentrification, kicking the black people out, kicking out the small businessman, right? This is what they're doing. It's crazy. Them prayers ain't working. We're going to we have to apply actual physical building. Do you not know you have black people right now that are collecting public assistance, welfare, whatever the case is, and they may have gotten an opportunity to get a job, but will refuse to take the job because if I take the job, it'll mess up my living arrangements where my rent is low or whatever the case is. So I would rather not take that good job because then now they would take away the welfare, they would take away the public assistance. So I would rather not take the good job. When the good job can put you in a better position in life, you can move out of the area where you're at. You don't have to depend on the government giving you public assistance. And you could teach your children financial literacy and break a generational curse. We don't want to do that. We would rather stay 
in bondage. We would rather not take the good job because we have a fear of what if the job go down and I got to move back to the hood. Fam, I'm convinced that if any of you take the risk of stepping out of your comfort zone, moving out of the hood and establishing something, you're never going to go back to the hood. You're never going to go back. I promise you, you're never going to go back. Once you have that mindset, abundance mindset, you can never go back. Your mind won't allow you to go back. You're going to be doing so much in terms of work. Your work ethic is going to be great. You're going to have a better thought process. You're going to be around other working class people, business minded people. You're going to be around neighbors that think like you. In order for you to elevate, you got to get around people that have that way of thinking. I personally cannot hang around nobody that think poverty and broke. I can't I can't be around that. Because those kind of people is going to keep you down. For example, case in point. Yesterday when I posted my 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 song, right? As soon as the premiere ended, a demon came into the comments and said, "Hey bro, don't quit your day job." As soon as I post my song, a demon came into the comments and said, hey, bro, don't quit your day job. Translation, you're not good enough. You're not good enough to do music. Stop while you're at it. Stay at your day job. That's a perfect example of a slave. That's a perfect example of a crab in the barrel. That's a perfect example of a ninja syndrome. A person that don't encourage you. A person that's jealous. A person that's envious. No salutes. No, hey, bro. No. It's the first thing. Hey, bro, don't quit your day job. It's really sad, right? That's the culture we live in, y'all. Partnerships. Hands and, it, and it don't start Listen. unless we could really be real with each other and say, this is what I did, this is what I did. Like, I mean, look at this. I know I'm not going to third rail y'all interview, but look at the power of what happened when me and Kyrie was on the same page. See, that's what's scary. That's what's scary, man. They don't want to see black men come together, y'all. One of the greatest fears of the enemy is seeing the black man and black woman come together in unity. I'm going to leave y'all with that. I'm going to get me something to eat. I'm coming back with another stream, which is going to be about the same issue. I'm going to pretty much, um, I got to give some pushback to a Christian that I seen talking negative about Ye. Um, I'm going to give him some pushback and um, share my thoughts about him and what he had to say in his video, do a reaction on his video. Because um, Christians are upset with Ye because he said he's his own God, right? And they, they misconstrued what he said. They twisted what he said. And they made it seem like Ye said he's God Almighty when that's not what he said. It's not what he said, all right? So we're going to get up on out of here. Let me um, shout out these uh, cash apps, those that support the show. Um, I'm going to try to get some outdoor content. We'll try to get some outdoor content. Um, let me see. Um, okay. Um, shout out to, shout out to Robert. Robert W. I'm not going to say the full name. 
Mr. Clay, Mr. Clay. Shout out to Mr. Clay. Lem. Lem. Um, is that G. Piercy? I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name right. Um, but I believe you had supported yesterday via Cash App, and you also made a comment. Um, shout out to you for your support. Darian, Darian, salute to you, Darian. Mr. O. Mr. O. You know what I mean? And what we're going to start to do also, man, like if you're a YouTuber, if you're a smaller YouTuber and you have a channel and you support the show, like you support this show and you have a YouTube channel, right? If you support this show, let me know that so that I can see what you do. That way, when I can, I can, you know, shout your channel out. That way the algorithm and the people who watch the show can see what you're doing. But it gotta be, you gotta be doing something, man. Don't, don't send me nothing if you ain't doing nothing. If, don't, don't do it. Don't even waste your time, especially you music people. Don't go sending me your YouTube, oh, I do music, fam, and I go click on your music and it's toxic. I'm not, I'm not shouting that out. You know what I mean? I'm not doing that. I'm talking about people that does work for the most high. You, you do commentary. You teach. You know what I mean? You, you put good information out there. Stuff like that. Because I have a lot of people that does music, do music. They always hitting me up about, yo, you could shout my channel out. You could do this and I could do that. And then when I click, I'm like, fam, I don't even listen to that type of mess. Like real talk, man. Go through the struggle like everybody else, man. When I do music, I just put my music out. Do the same thing. I did the same thing for years. You know? Yeah, but you can help me. I can't do nothing. Do it yourself, man. Like, go do the work. It's crazy, man. Shout out to Chosen. Wait, that's Chosen? Yeah. I guess Cozen. It's with a K, I guess. Cos I just, I'm going to say Chosen One. Chosen One. I'm just going to say Chosen One. Right? Shout out to you. Forever Studio, salute. Antoinette. Jason King. Radar 21. Tammy. Revolutionary Loss. Duwall. Um, let me see. Black Mind Money and Muscle. Salute. And shout out to um, Crappy Slappy. Shout out to Crappy Slappy for the support. Denise. Shout out to Denise. That's Den Wait. Yeah. Denise, yeah. Denise for the support. I got to get me something to eat, man. But um, we're going to come back with another one. We're going to be streaming a lot today, and I got I got to do some pre-recorded videos. I'm going to do some outside content, All right? I'm trying to get back to work. I had to take a little break to do other stuff, to release another song and whatnot, um, and also to kind of get my mind right. Because when you're doing this YouTube thing, people think this stuff is easy. This stuff is not easy. It's not, All right? This is a lot of work. Doing content is a lot of work, a lot of work. And it can take a toll on your body, mentally, physically, everything. It can drain you out. All right? So um, peace and blessings to the mods. Sean the Navigator in the building. Rebel for Almighty. Um, who else we got? Shout out to all the mods. Tracy, wherever you at. V Dubman. Sherelle. Show Shao. Y'all have a blessed day. You know what I mean? Have a blessed day. Um, stop calling ye crazy. He's a man. He's dealing with a lot of issues. He's being persecuted. I ain't saying he's a studied man of the Bible. I'm not saying that he knows it all. 
What I'm saying is take the wisdom that he's given you. We need to come together as men. If not, number one, our women are not going to respect us because we're too busy playing church. We're too busy praying to Jesus rather than going out there and building. So let's take the time to build. Let's take the time to repent of our sins and get right with the most high so that our women can see us brothers moving. Like I said, make sure you all support brother Newbreed. He have the initiative that he's working on with the land. You know, get involved with that. You know what I'm saying? When I get down to North Carolina, I'm getting involved. This ain't no joke. I'm not playing no games. You're going to see me, the brothers. We're going to be on the land. Don't, don't try to come be a part of something when it's popping. Get involved now. You know, reach out to New Breed and, and, and connect and see what, you know, where you fit in with, in terms of skills, um, support, and whatnot. You might be a brother and you know how to um, do masonry work. You know how to deal with concrete. You know how to, um, you got a skill. You got your electrician, you know. Reach out to that brother and see what, you know, where, where you, uh, where your expertise can fit in. We got to be men about this situation. If all of us come together as men and sit at the round table, um, we're going to be able to accomplish a lot. Like I said, Shout out to Pastor Dow. Double honor to, to Pastor Dow because he's the one that had the blueprint, right? He's the one with the blueprint. Pastor Dow have successfully built a community. The men, the brethren, the women, everybody is on one accord. And they're very good at what they're doing. Make sure you support um, uh, Pastor Dow's Patreon. Um, make sure you support his patron. As you know, his channel had got demonetized and whatnot. Um, I don't know exactly for what for. I think it had to do with those political videos and whatnot. Um, I'm going to try to see if I can reach out to see if like what like what he did regarding that. To see if they could get their channel back monetized again. But um, support their, his uh, Patreon. You know, you can find that on his channel. Um, notice how notice how I support the brothers with my words. It's not just about pulling money out your pocket, but just my words. My words alone is support. And see, people like Pastor Dow has put in so much work over the years, he shouldn't even have to ask for support. He given the people his life. He given men so much truth. It's like, how could you how could you not become a better man by listening? And and there's still listen. There's still a lot of things I gotta do. <laughs> there's still a lot more thing, a lot more work I gotta do to better myself as a man. You get what I'm saying? Because, like, when I'm in the clouds and I tune in to Pastor Dow and I'm kind of listening in. You know, there's times, man, when I get rebuked or I feel some sense of conviction or like, you know, you're supposed to be doing this, right? Because he's an elder brother and he'd been in this truth for a minute and iron sharpened iron. And I'm humble enough to say that. There's times probably when I teach things and some of you brothers might get convicted. You're like, oh, snap. Ringo's talking about me. I got to humble myself. I got to change. Don't get mad at me, but it might be the most high speaking through me to help you to grow up. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. We men. But like I said, Pastor Dow is the blueprint of what us men are supposed to be doing, man. And the most high have given new breed the spirit to to tap in to what a lot of us brothers have been thinking but we haven't put in we haven't put action behind those words we talk a lot but we haven't put boots on the ground we got to tie those boots up and actually get on out there that's why i chose to move to north carolina because if i went to 
Georgia or Florida, I'm going to be away. And now I got to travel. And it's like, nah, I want to be right there so that when they go to the land, we could just take a drive over there. You know, I could be like, yo, for the weekend, I'm going to be over there with new breed and the brethren. We're going to be over there working and the family will be home. And it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Because I could see this thing happening. I could see us really, really doing something big, man. Like as a community, that's that's yo, that's the way it's supposed to be, man. So, hey, make sure you support all the brothers in the truth. And um, it is what it is, man. Um, Caramel says North Carolina is six hours away from my house. I'm not gonna say now. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave it alone. You gonna get me? It's too early, man. <laughs> it's, too, it's still the a.m. She probably gonna say, "I didn't mean it that way, Ringo," but but my mind, my mind went somewhere else. <laughs> my mind went somewhere else, man. Let me stop before I get in trouble, man. Um. Okay, hold on a second. Let me do something real quick. It's funny, man. And was it was it Caramel's um, birthday the other day? I, I'm not sure if it was your if it was your birthday the other day. Happy birthday to you, because you know, I think I think it was. I'm not sure, but I, I thought some I saw somebody in the chat saying happy birthday. I'm not sure if it was or not. So if it was happy belated birthday, I didn't see the comment or whatnot. I don't know if it was. You know. She says, no, I mean it. <laughs> it's crazy, man. I'm over, I'm over here trying to work, man. <laughs> All right. Um, my elder daughter keep taking all my money, man. <laughs> I think I'm being punished by the Lord. See, I don't, I don't want to put her on blast. I'm going to keep that in the family. But you know what I'm saying? It's like, with her, I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a whole lot, fam. Like, a lot, a lot. But it's good, though. You know what I'm saying? It's good. But I'm learning a whole lot with her. I'm learning a lot of what I'm not going to do with my other three daughters. Because... She's on a whole different level. <laughs> and I know I'm not the only one that got these entitled kids. <laughs> I know I'm not the only one. But Ringo, if you teach them the Bible, they'll be perfect. <laughs> what you talking about, Will? <laughs> Who told you that? Who told you you teach them the Bible they perfect? That's a lie. No, no, no. Not so. You know? Um, let me see. <laughs> Yo, man. This is crazy, man. <laughs> Yo. Somebody deleted their comment. <laughs> <laughs> they, they retracted their comment. <laughs> I was about to talk about, I was about to read the comment. <laughs> I was about to read the comment, man. And the person retracted their comment, bro. Something about heavy meat. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just leave it alone, man. This is crazy. Hey, I'm coming back. I'm going to get me something to eat, man. I'm going to get me something to eat. Um, Shout out to, what's that? D Mobile to go for the membership. Appreciate you. Shout out to everybody that joined the membership. I'm raising my prices on those memberships, though. I mean, how much do it cost to become a member? I don't even know. I always wanted to know how much do it cost to actually become a member? I know those prices is super low because when I set up memberships, you know, I probably put the price so low. I don't know what it is, man. 
$399. Oh, it's $399. I mean, I'll I'll probably I'll probably keep the the uh 399 version, but I'm gonna have like other memberships that's more higher for people that want to actually support. You said it's $299. Damn, $299? Man, I got to raise those prices, fam. It's inflation, man. Got to raise those prices, man. But see, now, when I raise the prices, I got to also deliver something. So I'll keep it like that for now. Um, I'll raise it up. But I'm going to also do something once I raise them up. In other words, like I'll have like shows and stuff that I'll do private for the members. And then after a while, I'll release those videos to the public, which means the members got to see it first. You get what I mean? Like something like that. Because to have shows that are members only, to me, it's counterproductive because it's only for members only. So your members only get to see it and nobody else. So how do you even that even makes sense? You know what I mean? Got to do it a little more wise. Like to keep your video on members only, you're not making nothing. It's like you're not doing nothing. So. You said New Breeze is seven. Now, I definitely got to raise my price. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it's it's too low. Like $2.99? Come on, fam. Anybody could become a member. $2.99? You know, anybody could become a member. Anyway, I'm going to go get me something to eat, man. I'm going to come back with more. Like I said, the next stream I'm going to do. Uh, You know what? I'm going to do a different stream when I come back. And then I'll do the one that I was going to do. All right. That's what I'll do. So, yeah, that's about it, man. So y'all take care. It is what it is. Y'all have a blessed day. I got to get outside, too. That's another thing. I got to get outside. I'm going to do some content outside. I'm going to do some content outdoors. Um, it's supposed to be nice. It's supposed to be about 60 degrees. So that should be good. Charging up my scooter right now. You know. You said new breed is five. Yours is five and six. Wow. All y'all prices are more than mine. I definitely got to raise mine. <laughs> I got to raise mine, man. I got to raise my price. It's 75 degrees in North Carolina right now. <laughs> Tanea, you in North Carolina? It's 75 degrees? Dag, man. That's a spring day weather right there, man. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy, man. 75 degrees, man. I mean, I I wish it was like I wish it was like hot weather all year long, but like in the nighttime it's cool enough where if you wanted to wear a jacket or a coat, you could still do it because I would hate to move somewhere and I can't use none of my like winter clothes. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because like I said, I, I wanted to go to Florida. But if I did that, depending on the, the area and whatnot, like, what would happen with all my, like, winter clothing? <laughs> I got a lot of stuff, man. And I had located a Home Depot in North Carolina, man. I found it on the map. As soon as I saw it, I started smiling. <laughs> you know? As long as they got a Home Depot, man. If they didn't have no Home Depot there, I ain't going. <laughs> I need a Home Depot, man. I'm going to be there all the time. I'm going to get to know everybody at Home Depot. <laughs> you know? Okay, so, um, what's this name? Is that Shamor Shamore? I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing the name properly, but salute to you for joining the membership. 
$2.99 membership. So people, people joining the membership quick. They're like, yo, let me join at $2.99 before he raised them price. <laughs> yo, they're like, yo, let me join now before he raised the price, bro. That's crazy. You said I'm going to need those winter coats in North Carolina. I know it get cold on certain days, though. And they get some snow. You know? I'm hungry, man. I'm really, really hungry right now. Thinking what I'm going to do when I head outside. Oh, man. Before I, before I leave New York, I'm going to be, like, I'm going to travel to all the different people I know in New York. Like, yo, bro, man, yo, I'm leaving, bro. <laughs> Heading out, fam. Got to say all my goodbyes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, shout out to Black Honey for the membership. Black Honey. Is that Be Conscious? Be Conscious, Black Honey for the membership. Shout out to Loss. I, with your name, it's like on the Cash App, it's reverse. So I, I get confused every time I see it. Loss, Revolutionary, but on the Cash App, it's Revolutionary Loss. You said do the Puerto Rican voice at Ringo. It's a mixture. It's not really, it's not really um, a Puerto Rican voice. It's like a mixture of Panamanian, Dominican, and I guess Puerto Rican, like in one. That's what it is. Because it depends, like at the, the bodegas over here, you have, um, you have Puerto Rican spots. A lot of the stores would be Puerto Ricans. You have um, some Dominicans. Um, it's mostly Puerto Rican and Dominican. I don't know any stores out here that is owned by Panamanians. I don't know. I don't think so. A lot. Normally, it's a lot of Puerto Ricans that are connected. A lot of them know how to work together to have, like, to start businesses. <laughs> they know how to connect to... Um, To have their stores and a lot of Arab men, they know how to get their businesses going. You know? I try to tell her, Papi, she don't listen to me, Papi. I try to tell her, you know? Me madre, she come to the country and uh, I went to the ventana, I look outside and I see a man and he, he, he mess up my car. You know? So I went downstairs, I jump on my bicicleta and I went to the park, and I tried to tell her. <laughs> but, you know, in a lot of these stores, they be like that sometimes. Like, sometimes you'll go to a store where they have, like, Dominicans, and they be like, hey, yo, primo. Hey, papi. Hey, hey, primo. Come to the counter and pay, lao. Hey, what you doing over there? What you doing, papi? Primo, come to the counter and pay. Pay the price. That's how it be sometimes, because, you know, they be stealing sometimes in the stores. You have these dudes coming in, and they stealing, and they be, they be there watching you, man. You know? In the Arab stores, they don't be doing that. In the Arab stores, they ain't worrying about you stealing nothing. They got that gun behind the register. I, 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 I'm not kidding you. The, a lot of the Arabs that's in the black community, they, they black too. <laughs> they, they just as hood as the black people in the hood. 
but they gotta be because you can't you can't have a store in the black community as an Arab man and you not affiliated with the people. You gotta know the people. You might be Arab and whatnot, but you gotta know the people in order to get that rip that respect. You have a lot of dudes in the hood, they respect the Arab store guys. You know? And it's just it's like a respect thing. You know what I mean? You show respect, they show respect. That's that's all it is. But now if you go to the Asian store, bro, and you you don't have five cents, he not letting you go. <laughs> that two dollar fifty cent. Two dollar fifty cent. But I only got two dollars and forty nine cents. No, no, go, go. Two dollar fifty cent. Go pay. You order four chicken wing five 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 Y. Four chicken wing five 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 Y. Two dollar fifty cent. Wait. No, oh, that's ten dollar fifty cent. I mean, how much is four chicken wings, French fries, and fried rice? That's like probably like twelve dollars now, right? Back in the day, it was two dollars and fifty cents. You know, listen. Back in the day, four chicken wings. And fries was $2.50, fam. Chinese restaurant, no cap. It's crazy, man. Um, Brainwave says, remember, people were a community. Please support in one way or another. Yeah. I mean, if you have a business in any hood, you got to respect the community. This is why a lot of businesses fail sometimes is because they're there to just to make money. You, yeah, you're there to make money. I get it. But you have to respect the community. Even if you don't agree with the way they move, you got to understand the culture of the people. This is why a lot of times when you're in the hood, people, they get it twisted. It's like if you're in Brooklyn, right? When you're in Brooklyn and you're in the hood, it's a culture. It's a thing of way how everybody move. A lot of people that's not from out in them areas, they tend to think that people slow, people dumb. No, you dumb. You have a lot of people that's in the hood that's smart. You understand? They just move a certain way. See, it's that level of disrespect that causes problems. It's when you think people are dumb. People not dumb. <laughs> they smarter than you. You know what I mean? It's just that they move a different way. <laughs> That's all it is. It's just like I'm sure if one moved from New York to L.A., it's a whole different vibe. Whole different, different vibe. You got to move different. You got to understand how people move because you might get in trouble. You might walk into the wrong neighborhood saying the wrong things, doing the wrong things. Somebody got to call you on the side and, and kind of give you the, 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 you know, like, yo, bro, I know you're not from out here. So I'm going to kind of just run this through you one time. Like, see, like this area here, like when you come through, like with what you're doing right there, it can cause a little, a little, a little problems, fam. Like real talk. And you just, you got to respect it, bro. If you, if you are out of town or you are, you're not from there and somebody call you on the side and kind of put you on game, you can't look at it as he's disrespecting you. That's not your hood. You in a whole different area. You far away from home, homeboy. They had mercy on you. He ain't have to tell you nothing. He could have just let you rock out. You doing all the wrong things, you end up getting in trouble. Even in Brooklyn, you go to a, a certain neighborhood, you're not from that neighborhood, you got to know how to move. You got to know how to move. You got to know how to talk. You got to know how to show respect. Just the basics. We're not talking about being scared of nobody. We're just talking about you have to understand the streets. Just like you want respect, people want respect too. If everybody respect everybody, we would have no problems. You know? It's like when you walk up into somebody's store, 
Say good morning. Greet the people. Don't just walk up in there like, learn how to greet people. Some people don't got no manners, bro. It's a whole different set of rules in Brooklyn now. A lot of the older cats got older. The younger, the younger cats now is a different breed, a br different breed, and they have their own set of rules, which is totally different. You get what I'm saying? Totally different set of rules, and a lot of a lot of out of pocket stuff be happening every single day, and it be bad. But if there's still a certain code of, of conduct that you're supposed to have at all times. You got to keep your head on a swivel at all times in New York. At all times. And again, see the thing about the thing about New York, right? And the thing about Brooklyn mainly, people know who's who. We know who's who. We know who, we know if you're not from out here. Or we, we just looking at how you move. Yo, where you going to the hood? Nah, fam, I don't want to walk over there, fam, because you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what do you mean, bro? You, in the world, you all scared. Like, what, what's the matter with you? <laughs> My partner live over there, bro. Nah, I'm just saying, I don't, you know what I mean? I don't want to, like, bro, stop being damn scared, bro. <laughs> Nobody ain't doing none of you. When you from the streets, when you from the hood, you could go to any hood. You're not worried about nothing because you're from the hood. You get what I'm saying? So you're not. It's when people come from different places, they be they be nervous, bro. The only ones who come to the hood and never nervous is white people. I'm no cap. Listen, white people will come to the hood and walk by with their dog. Hey, Tom, we're having an awesome day. Yes. My wife and the kids were heading down the park. <laughs> wow. So this is what they call the ghetto. <laughs> you don't see them nervous because they know nobody in the hood going to do anything to them. <laughs> see, the black man in the hood know better than to do anything to the white man. No cap. The hood is not doing nothing to a white man or a white woman. You ain't trying to catch that charge. <laughs> and it's sad that I got to crack jokes with this, but it's the truth. We're more likely to do something to one another, but we'll give everybody else a pass. Go ahead and rob a white woman in the hood and pull a gun. You're done, bro. You're done. You're finished. It's over for you. They're going to, listen, they're going, they'll go through the whole building to look for you. You understand? Two things you don't want to do in New York. If you delete a cop in New York, fam, they hunting you down. If, let's say you run into a, a, a apartment complex and you are wanted for, for often a cop, they go into everybody's door. Everybody's door. I'm talking about everybody's door. Police coming. Feds everybody. Do you understand me? They are gonna find you. That's one thing you don't want to do. You commit, you commit crimes against the police, you're finished. You don't want to do that. Matter of fact, there's three. You commit a crime against a cop, you're done. If you commit a crime against a white man, white woman in New York, that's going to be a problem for you. And if you commit a crime against them people, y'all know which people I'm talking about. You know them people who claim to be us? It's crazy. 
But shout out to the brothers in the in, in the YouTube streets that made a lot of comedy with uh the uh the situation where the, the um them them folks dig the tunnels under the ground. Um they had made some comedy skits. One brother in particular, he had did his first and then another content creator, I guess he saw what he did and it's like he he got a little more success with his and whatnot, which I felt that he should have shouted out the other brother. You know what I mean? Cause he did it first. But um I I salute both of those brothers for their attempts because it takes you gotta have balls of steel to actually make that kind of content. Especially with all of the nonsense going on with social media, to do that kind of content the way y'all did it. Um you gotta commend yourselves and and really that it it takes a an interesting kind of person to do that kind of content. You know, I'm, I'll talk about that another time. I'm hungry. So I'm going to get up on out of here, y'all. Y'all take care. Um, it is what it is. Um, you say your membership is $4.99. Dag, I got the lowest membership on YouTube. I got the lowest membership, man. This is sad, man. I got to do better, bro. It's crazy, man. He says, yeah, remember the Larry Davis days in NYC was wild. I remember when I was a kid. I ain't going to go too much into it because, like, I know the whole story of what happened and whatnot. Everybody on the block know. Um, they had off this cop and whatnot. Right now, the feds is probably listening, so I got to be careful with what I say. But they had off this cop. And they threw him off the roof, bro. Threw him off the roof. You know what I mean? Crazy stuff, man. We we were kids, little kids, man, on the block, just kind of just innocent. We saw a dude coming down off the roof, man. It's not something kids should see, but we saw it. Because they actually came to the hood looking for him. And I guess he went up to the roof. We were all downstairs. It was all this commotion, everything going wild. Next minute, we saw that body coming down, bro. It's crazy. I never seen nothing like that, fam. And the sound it made when it hit the floor, the ground, man. It's no joke. But, yo, we're going to be back later, man. Feds are probably like, what block? What block? We, we have those un unsolved cases. <laughs> I said I was a kid, fam. You going to bring me in for questioning? I mean, dang. Half of the people that was probably on that case probably dead already. It's crazy, man. Anyway, y'all, we'll be back later. Ringo TV reactions. Make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Appreciate everybody stopping by. Um, y'all stay safe out there. Get the likes up on the video. Let's get these likes to 1,000, fam. Let's get these likes to 1,000. So, hey, make sure y'all rate, comment, and subscribe. I'll catch y'all in the next video. We out of here. Y'all take care. Peace. If you like our content, consider supporting via Cash App at dollar sign Ringo TV Raw. Become a patron on Patreon.com for exclusive video content not shown on YouTube. You could also support through PayPal at paypal.me slash Ringo TV Raw. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell to be notified of new content. Follow me on Instagram at Ringo TV Raw. This is Ringo TV Reactions. The only channel on YouTube bringing you the truth 100% raw and uncut. I'm out. Peace.